and we are going free, at least I believe. <laughs> Let's hope that the stream is coming through okay. I've got a few things left to uh, set up as we rush into the office and sit down and begin to assemble everything we need to assemble for a fantastic stream once again with you all. Another opportunity to go free to talk about the things that affect our people, the things that undermine who and what we are and uh, trouble us, afflict us, infect us, and we find remedies for those things. So how is everybody doing? Can you hear me okay? Let's see who all is here. Ryan Manley, I just saw go by. Nancy Drew. Sir Charles Edmonds writes, no white guilt. LG. I just it writes, I just got that same mug this week. Wow, we must be on the same wavelength. Yes, indeed. This is from the, the mighty way of the world. Johnny Scythe is here. Good. Oh, he sounds good. Thank you, my friend. Seaver Hamlin says, sound good. Well, why don't we go ahead and start entropy right now before Seaver has to even remind me. The great Seaver the Achiever is uh, always on top of things. So we will, Seaver. we will mute that and entropy should be up and rolling for everyone. And we will see Beer Hall Putsch is here. We have both, uh, both channels up uh, so I can see you on gardening. And if you tag me over there as Gardening with NWG, it will appear orange on this monitor. It will up the chances that I will see you. Over there right now, I see Samantha Fox, art maker, is there. Pib, thought criminal, is over there as well. Andre, Jesse, Jay is there. Who do we have over here? Polygon is over here. This is on uh, No White Guilt channel nordic warrior what a great name always great to see you all food police is here cecilia wright on sally last stand spencer's thoughts is back hey the great snow shadow is here good evening to you as well apollo the left over is here ryan o great to see you Looks like Food Police already got us started with a $4 super chat. A cute little a, a fox or dog with a presenting a little bone, it looks like, with a little bow around it. Thank you for that. That's how you get started in the party. You walk in the room and you throw money in the air. And uh, we also are having some people subscribe to the channel right now. Rick is here. Hello to you. Laura is here. Great to see you. Robert, Heidi, wonderful to see you. Let us see. We, we should have, and we do. Looks like DLive is up and rolling. Ray is over there. Great to see you, Ray. Heidi as well. Tay is there. I forgot to unleash or release or disperse or distribute, whatever the verbiage is they use on DLive for the chest. So we have to try to somehow help me remember to do that. And I will disperse the funds as we get to the end of the stream. Great to see you all over there on DLive. Great to see everyone on Twitch. Uh, we got people watching on Twitch right now. VK, hello to you all on VK. Hello to uh, those watching on Facebook and uh, Periscope. And perhaps in the future, we will have even more platforms that we will be reaching out to people on. If you all could please take this opportunity to grab that URL and quickly share it on your Facebook accounts, on the, your DLive accounts, Twitter, etc. Gab, I would most appreciate it. Let's see what we have over here. Again, uh, questions, <clears throat> excuse me, Resurrection Jose. If you have questions or comments you uh, want me to address, then you can just write those in either of the live chats on YouTube. If you write it in, in uh, DLive, I, I have not had an opportunity to go out and get the monitor and the software for the, the other setup 
that uh, NPC, I think it's NPC 162, so graciously uh, provided uh, us the the funds for NPC 162. Thank you very much. I will have that, and we'll be able to have that screen up running simultaneously. Uh, so thank you very much. But at the moment, if you write me over there, the odds of me seeing it are going to be the least of your options. And uh, of course, if you tag me on the No White Guilt channel, uh, that will bring my name up as orange. I will see you there and uh, be able to read your comment or question. And everyone who super chats will have their super chats read uh, and uh, whether a question or statement. If there's something in there that just uh, jeopardizes the channel, I will change the verbiage a little bit, but we'll still, we'll still try to make it work. All right. All right, so a good uh, Sunday evening, Monday morning to all of you today in the community for white well-being, the community that will be here long after the current fads die away. It will be here when the new fads crop up. It will be here when those fads themselves die away. Uh, we will be the living body that continues when all of these silly, simple things that uh, people try to staple meaning to, uh, they try to staple some sort of longevity to, when all of that has faded away, we will still be here. We will still be remembered. We will still have a place in the history of our great and glorious people, Western kind, who come together on the basis of our bio spirit, not an idea, not a religion, but on the basis of the only thing that can claim your life, and that is the bio spirit that gave you life. The bio spirit that pumped into you all of the talents, the intelligence, the abilities, whatever they may be. And whatever they may be, you know this very well, we talk about often, that they have all been undermined, they have all been crippled by the thought diseases, the mean pathogens, MPs, that you are infected with, that we all are infected with, and we need to treat for the totality of our lives. Ryan Manley just came in with a super chat, $9.99, thank you very much. Remember, we don't have to agree with everything as long as we know what we work for is our culture. Well, very well said, a timely said actually, that you would write and send that super chat, right as I was saying, that the, the basis on which we unite. Now, the culture that, that Ryan is speaking about is the projection of the bio spirit. So it is ultimately the same thing, as long as we are honest enough to admit that culture is not something that you can don or doff like a shirt, uh, like a jacket. Too many of the conservatives, the conservatives feel this way, that it is something you can put on and take off. Yes, there are going to be non-white people out there who are good people to the right, uh, in most cases of their bell curves for their people. And they want to live in the culture, the biosphere that our people produce. And as long as there aren't so many of them that they develop numerical courage and begin to manifest, project their biosphere onto our environments, our environment will be one in which they can live, one in which they, the a type of environment they want. In fact, I will tell you that I have uh, had a neighbor that was uh, non-white from another country and uh, had moved to the United States a great many years ago and complained to me that the country was becoming too much like some of the other countries around the world, that it wasn't, it wasn't Western anymore. Of course, that meant that it wasn't white anymore. And he's moved again and again to try to get away from all of these areas that have become less Western, less white. He has a non-white wife. Uh, they had non-white uh, children. And uh, they are clearly the type of people who are honest enough, uh, intelligent enough to say, look, this is the kind of place we want to be. And we don't want to bring in a bunch of all of these different peoples and make it into the kind of place that we fled. So they, they complain about it. They have moved from it. They, they have, they have sort of white flighted uh, with the rest of us. Uh, and so uh, there are going to be those kinds of individuals, but ultimately we have a scenario where it is the 
number of white people, the percentage of white people in our projection that creates that culture of Western civilization that is, by the voting of their feet of the rest of the world, the finest place there is on planet Earth. They would not come here in the numbers they do. They would not, rest assured, if the anti-whites were to have 100% control with no resistance and they wouldn't have to worry about what the uh, what the white population, the broad sweeping middle of the population of whites with normal sensibilities, what we uh, had to say or wouldn't have to worry about the power that they could exert on them, the anti-whites would just throw the borders down and in a day, the entirety of the world would come to the West. The only places that, the only peoples that would not come would be the ones who had walls around their countries to prevent them from leaving places like China uh, for in large part. Let's see, we just had uh, Pamela Cedar Creek, the great Pamela. She uh, shared with us her uh, hello video, I guess it's the best, an introduction video that she did, a wonderful video, a lovely little home, a uh, little cabin, very warm kitchen. Uh, it was wonderful to see Pamela, $9.99. Hey guys, Red Ice member here, let the let the encouragement party begin. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> Indeed, let's let it begin. If my, I have, I have a something going on in my uh, throat. So if the voice begins to go, uh, we will, we'll, tr we'll protract, we'll prolong this as long as we can, but uh, we'll see. As Seaver Hamlin says, entropy and the rest. Thank you, my good friend. All right, let's see who else we have here and what else is going on. Did I mention outrageously inoffensive is here? It just shot by. Robert is here. And uh, Elaine, the great Elaine Sabatino is here. Walter uh, Potter is here. Great to see you. I like this food police's little, uh, is that a, is that supposed to be a, a groiper with a cowboy hat? The avatar? DM is here. Great. Uga Booga is here. Wonderful to see you. Wow, there's a, a fantastic name here written in some fancy letters, and I am not going to be able to read that unless I make that screen a lot bigger. Little, uh, it looks like a pink, a pink of maybe a daisy of some sort. Great to see you. Uh, so, all right, Alan is here as well. We're going to be talking about a few things today. First thing I want to mention to you all is that the last message to the West contest website is up. So the last message to the West contest website is up. The URL is simply this last message to the west.com last message to the west.com. And if uh, one of my wonderful mods could share that in the live chat, that would be stupendous. All you do is you head to the over there, and uh, Freeze is here, says, hi, Jason, great to see you. <clears throat> D DM says, thanks for the shout out, hope you're keeping well. I'm always well, I'm fantastic. Lisa is here, great to see you as well. Uh, so yeah, you just head on over to the website and you're going to uh, cast your votes. I think there, I haven't done it myself yet. And I think you are able to cast your votes all the way up through Thanksgiving and uh, you'll, you can give so many stars, I think, on each video. So I believe you get to vote on every single one and put as many stars as you want. Uh, and the purpose of the project is you want the, the video to win that you think will speak most poignantly and effectively to our white brothers and sisters out there who, if this is the last video that they get to see from someone in the white positive sphere, will be moved, or, or the video that will most likely move them out of the options that are there to investigate, to look further, to look on some of these other uh, platforms now, like DLive and the like. Alt Media is here asking how old I am. Well, well, how old do you think I am? Elaine Sabatino, pretty soon there isn't going to be anywhere to run to, Jason. Well, I, there are, really already isn't. I've, I've, I've talked with some very sagacious, very wise people uh, in over the years. I've, I've kind of, uh, I kind of uh, accumulated the best of the best from the white positive sphere as 
collaborators, as uh, influencers, as uh, people that I can just ultimately seek advice from. And it has been a, a uniform opinion that there, fortunately, there is nowhere else to white fly to. I mean, you, on planet Earth, <clears throat> if there were, the problem would be that we as a people, and, and if you read Prometheus Rising, you'll see this in our maker, Prometheus, uh, which will be made into a standalone book, by the way. It's, it's also, of course, in Born Guilty. Uh, but you see this exhibited in Prometheus, that rather than take the hard stand, rather than be rude to the other, which is something that perhaps genetically we are just not good at doing, uh, perhaps genetically we survived in the harsh uh, northern climes of Europe by being welcoming to the other. And by the other, I don't mean outside of Western kind, out, outside of our race, but those who are nonetheless strangers to us. And it was something that as long as we were welcoming to them, then we might be welcomed if, for whatever reason, our supplies were spoiled, that we couldn't survive the winter, and we needed to go begging at some other homestead. So perhaps the, the what has come down to us is this reluctance to be rude to the other, to be rude to the stranger, to see our suffering in a projected suffering in them or an imagined suffering in them, to see our desire to do on to uh, those, uh, our hosts, better than they would give to us, to see that in th the other, the stranger, even though that has been demonstrated, that's not what they're thinking, all of these groups coming to our Western countries. They have not shown up and said, we'll do more for you because you rescued us, because you did all of this for us. How often have you heard uh, anti-white, non-white people come into Western civilization and say, thank you so much, white people, for bringing in uh, my family, for bringing in my kind. And because you have done all of this uh, for us, you have all of this generosity, we're gonna do all of this in return. We're gonna get together and we're gonna make an organization out of this particular non-white group or that particular non-white group. And it's going to be dedicated to helping those who helped us. That has never happened. It has never happened. And rest assured, if white people had to go to some China or some other country and we were rescued and taken in by them, guaranteed we would be bending over backwards to give and to give and to give, to make, to make up for their kindness, to make up for their generosity. All we get across the West is give me more, give me more. Where can I get more? You owe me more. That's all we get. So perhaps it is that we are just prone to this state that we find it difficult to be rude to the other. And so we would rather than be rude and say enough, what's, it's not even rude, uh, I guess, depends on how you want to classify this, but harsh with the other, the outsider. Be harsh and say enough is enough. Either get the hell out or you're not taking any more or this is the end of the, the, the easy ride for you. Now you're gonna have to compete with the rest of us. Uh, instead of doing that, we have demonstrated again and again that we will just let them have our beautiful creations and we will just white flight off to a new land and build Western civilization all over again. We actually find it easier to go and rebuild civilization than to be rude to these people in our midst. This is a lot about how caring of a people we are, how loving of a people we are, the exact opposite of what our little boys and girls are taught at our schools, at our universities, in their cartoons, in their television shows, in our movies, all the time, all we hear. And we're gonna be talking about this uh, Noel uh, character a little bit later. And that's all he talked about. Uh, was how evil we, how evil we are as a, and have always been as a people. Let's see, where do I have this? Ignatiev, Noel Ignatiev. So we'll be talking about him 
a little later. Uh, and, and we'll be talking about what the real story is there. And of course, it's not being talked about elsewhere because everywhere else is stupid. Everywhere else outside of the, uh, the service to white well-being, this community is stupid. Uh, you know, I, I get may, maybe it's when maybe it's when I have, you know, like a, something that challenges me, a s infection in the throat and I get a little bit, I don't know, I, I guess short with the stupidity uh, out there. And I just feel like <clears throat> saying it like it is. Uh, I have done nothing if, if this and that is we take people who are in a bad way. We take people who are wealthy relative to me and suffering from mean pathogens all the way to those who barely have a pot to piss in and are suffering from drug addiction or on their way to white flighting out of this world and we make them better. They get better, they get stronger, they come on board. This will be, this is what is saving lives. This is what is improving lives. It is not a person. It is not a celebrated uh, individual that is doing this. It is a community that is doing this. That's why this will live. That's why the anti-whites could take me down and this will keep going. The curative contagion is out there in the world. One of the ways that it's going to keep going is by the great work of a lovely porridge and jared george with this uh, last message to the west.com website please if you haven't already go over there and vote and uh, participate and a big heartfelt thank you to everyone who contributed money for the cash prize uh, so that uh, we could bring in as many creators as possible and we're talking a little bit about the types of submissions in the future, both to this channel and to all of the kinds of competitions and things that that we do in service to white well-being in this sphere, uh, because it's there's an important lesson there to to discuss as well. So take a quick look at uh, the things you all are saying. Now remember, when it comes to the super chatting, you have YouTube on No White Guilt uh, that is obviously still working today and you have the familiar alternative. You also have a cash app and uh, Kofi, which are down in the description as well. Every single one of these dollars all the way down to the penny are spent on creating this community, creating the organizational entity, enabling uh, me with that, those endeavors to bring in by way of proof of concept people who have a little bit more than uh, the rest of us working class folks have and who not not rich by any means but who have a little bit more and who might be able to help us take that next step up and that's what we're definitely looking to do i see over here on the gardening channel oh there's the great uh miss jess horst over there hello to you hope you're doing well today and i see uh, Jay Isom over there on uh, the gardening channel. Great to see you. Jade Lee is over there. Hello to you. And what do we have? Let me just make sure that this is uh, got a little bit behind. So I'm going to catch this up. And we will be set. Underhill is here. Great to see you, brother. E.L. Dragon. That's a great name. Simon is here. D great D.B. Cooper. We're going to be talking about you in just a moment, my good friend. Uh, K.D. is here. K.D. Uh, super chatting $5. What a great avatar that is with the butterfly. And you can see, I guess that is a monarch. Uh, on the one side, you could see the, the wing and the coloration, although it could be a viceroy. We had quite a few viceroys in my area this past uh, spring. Those small, super chatting here, $5, Katie, 
right? Though small, no, first of all, no amount is small. Every penny that every single person gives to this service to white well-being is a fortune. It's an absolute fortune because I know we're all working class people. Nobody here is Mr. Pi. If Mr. Pi drops 100,000, it's going to be a small amount because Mr. Pi has many scores of millions of dollars. Katie writes, though it's small, it's my first time to contribute since uh, WWB, Why Will Being, helped me escape a six-year abusive relationship 18 months ago. Love you all. We heal people, people here. God bless you, Katie. That is magnificent. Let's get a round of applause for Katie, please, everybody. That is truly a beautiful super chat and a, and a testimony uh, that is, is going to help a great many people. That, thank you so much for sharing that. Though small, it's my first time to contribute since White Will Being helped me escape a six-year abusive relationship 18 months ago. Love you all. We heal people here. Well, love you, Katie. Thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. That is That is truly magnificent. Thank you so much for sharing that. Let's see what else we have. Blue Sky says you need honey and lemon, sir. Well, maybe I'll, I'll get some of that when we're through here. I will push through. I will pretend. I don't know. Uh, since, since we all are working class here, uh, we can share the little, the little inside trick that we do. And that is that when we're sick, we just pretend like we're not so that we can keep working. I went, I went, I'll tell you all this story. I went to a, on a vacation. I see Marsha is here over on the gardening channel, unless it's not picking up the gardening channel for some reason. Marsha, are you on the gardening channel or are you on the white guilt channel? But, uh, oh, so this is what happened. I went on vacation. This was many years ago, as you all know, I don't get to take vacations anymore. I don't know how I could. How could the only way I could be on a vacation would be as if I'm doing this during it. So I guess that would be, I would still consider it a vacation if I could just get away from the day work. But I went to uh, I'll just say a beach. I guess I can say Outer Banks. And by the second day, this headache set in. I can't even describe that well first it was just like a headache but then <clears throat> as the day went on it was it was like someone had put a vice around my head and i just cranked that thing all the way up and it was crushing but i figured i'm on vacation how often do i get to be in the outer banks this is north carolina and not lovely out there i wasn't fishing or anything but the fishing is fabulous i understand and uh Anyhow, the next day, the headache was worse and it just kept, it just kept crushing my head. And I just said, I am going to pretend if I have to this entire vacation that I'm okay, that my head is not actually doing this. I'll just pretend as best I can so that no one else will know that this is happening to me. And, or if they know, they won't, they won't be able to really see it in me. Uh, and I will just pretend as best I can so that I won't even know. And sort of the same attitude I took uh, when I was in the service. No matter how nasty the thing or difficult, challenging the thing I had to do, I just told myself over and over, this is great. Uh, I, this is exactly what I want to be doing right now. It's great. And even though you know you're not really being honest, some some part of you begins to believe it. You just keep saying it not like a mantra like you're a loony or something but you just keep saying it as it gets bad and i also have a so when things get bad i feel really bad uh, and you all will know uh, because i'll start laughing i don't know why but uh, if something really hurts or uh the situation is really bad i just i think it's uh, uh, it's funny for some reason to me 
anyhow, what happened with my what happened with my vacation was I began to think, okay, maybe it's these these tall uh, grasses. Uh, they had what were some of those grasses called? Maybe the name will come back to me. And I thought, okay, maybe it's those things, and I'm having some sort of allergic and response. Uh, so I was I, I was taking probably Claritin or something like that. It did nothing. And it wasn't until the next to last day that I was there that I realized that I hadn't had any caffeine whatsoever. My normal two cups of coffee a day, I had just omitted because I was just at the beach having fun. And so I thought, oh my God, this has been a caffeine headache this bad the entire time. So I ended up driving down to a diner and getting a cup of coffee. And within 15 minutes, it was completely gone. So, uh, and the thing that was really bad was that I was also, you know, I, would ha I guess then I was having probably, it could be a day, days where either two cups of tea or one cup of coffee, one cup of tea. So I actually had tea with me but I just wasn't drinking it. Outrageously inoffensive and no I guilt gardening in Tahiti. <laughs> uh, is that Raziel says purchase organic ginger root and lemon tea and add one large tablespoon of honey, stir and let cool. So good for sore throat and cold always works for me. Ginger is anti-inflammatory. Well, that would, that sounds good as well. Maybe I'll try that out. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. All right. Some people were guessing ages. I, I see numbers. So I guess that was age ages that folks were guessing. You could base guesses on how I look and the amount of time I have spent in the white positive sphere that I've talked about quite a little bit. Looks like we have food police over on the familiar alternative, super chatting $1. Of course, it's not being talked about elsewhere because everywhere else is stupid, quoting me. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Everywhere else is stupid. They bother themselves with trivialities. And we actually get to the core of things that matter inside your psyche and the building of the, the culture again from the ruins, the ashes of Western civilization. This idea that others like to spread, ladies and gentlemen, that we're running out of time. We're almost out of time. Don't heed a word of that. In sales, it's a, it's a tactic. Sales, uh, uh, sells fast, price on the rise, few left. It is a simple sales tactic. They get you every time with it. Don't fall for it. We are not about to lose. We have lost. Western civilization was taken out of our hands, each of our countries at different times, as soon as the money supply was printed by foreigners, by others, by private institutions in a universe where currency is exchanged for the things that each individual human being needs and wants for survival and happiness. Money is the most important and powerful thing there is, period. Don't let anyone tell you anything else. Money, that money system went to war against Christianity in Europe and defeated Christianity including the Catholic Church. As wealthy as it was, it still didn't have the power to compete with the ability to print that which people need and want. And that is why we have been driven into the state we are today. So the question is not, and once again, this is a, a matter of asking the right questions in order to get the right answers. If you are saying to yourself, or if thought influencers are saying to you that, that, oh, we need to move quickly because X, Y, or Z, uh, and, and therefore 
these steps have to be taken, political steps or what have you, they have come to the incorrect answers. They have come to answers that won't be efficacious for us and our people because those starting questions, that starting point is incorrect. Does that make sense? We have to begin now in earnest to prepare ourselves to get this curative contagion out there to as many of our brothers and sisters as we possibly can because there is something coming, the event horizon. And we talked about that. It's going to be the window for us to take back our destiny. And when we take back our destiny, all of this other stuff will fall into place very easily. You have people with maybe even folks with uh, otherwise talented in the way that uh, IQ makes them perhaps uh, they have great memories or they, they are very creative or what have you. But it's obviously not high enough to figure out that they're mired in the context. We here are not mired in the context. We see across the ages, the ages past and ages to come. That is how we are able to ask the right questions and come up with the right answers. So the other thing we're gonna talk about quickly is don't forget to visit theafterparty.tv, theafterparty.tv. And make sure when you do to sign up for the mailing list, which is now uh, functioning properly. And we can thank Jared George for the good and hard work that he is doing over there to make that available for us. By signing up to that mailing list, you are going to be abreast. You're going to be au courant of the things that we are doing, information we need to pass along to you. But more importantly, if the anti-whites decide to yank us, to censor us, to extirpate us from the platform, and it won't be in a way that will prevent us in toto from being on the platform, we're not going anywhere. We will keep coming back and coming back like bad relatives. We will just keep coming back and they will have to hunt us down and get rid of us every time because this is where our brothers and sisters are going to be for the foreseeable future. But if they do decide to censor No White Guilt Channel off of the platform and Jared George off of the platform, if they do decide to censor that, you need to know what's going on. You need to be able to find us. Remember that at a bare minimum, you're going to be able to go to that website, uh, theafterparty.tv, also mine, nowhiteguilt.org to find information about what is taking place if the sirens go off, if the anti-whites decide to begin burning everything down because they know that their lies, their anti-white lies that are already enfeebled by reality. There's already cognitive dissonance, such cognitive dissonance out there that their lies are like a, a playing card set on its edge somehow balanced on its edge. There's no movement of air in the room. Somehow a playing card is balanced on its edge. That is the precarious nature of the mean pathogens. And the reason why it is in that precarious nature is because it is contradicted by reality everywhere a person goes. The only thing that keeps it from falling over is that the great fear that one will be punished for deviating, for being a heretic, for deviating from anti-whiteism, uh, and uh, the, the so the so the punishment of it is the only reason why it is, is standing on its edge, uh, and not being exposed to the truth, which doesn't burn like dew in the light of day, which doesn't evaporate when you go out into society and you're confronted with uh, reality. In fact, you see everything that we say here in, in Go Free and, and on the show here, Going Free, that it is all confirmed by what you experience in the real world. The anti-whites can't tolerate that uh, par running parallel to their lives because they know the slightest hint of a breeze and that card will fall right over. So let us see. I am so excited about what Katie said a little earlier. That is truly a beautiful thing. Thank you so much. Think about how many people, both men and women, who are in abusive relationships 
and they suffer year after year after year in that abusive relationship, never building up the courage to go elsewhere, never th thinking, in fact, that to to leave is going to somehow land them into in, in a in a worse scenario. Think about how many people go through that. And here we have Katie. This Katie is the first one uh, in our community to to say that she left an abusive relationship because she started going free. God bless you, Katie. All right, let's see what else we have. So don't forget that mailing list, ladies and gentlemen. Let's support, as I look here, I wanna mention again, let's support our artists. There's the great Fornal is here. Hey, Mandy is here, great to see you. Reptile is here, Bigot Smalls, Dave is here. Zendrofen is here, great to see you. JT Smith, really, really a, a fine participant in our community, JT. So let's support our artists. In, in the white positive sphere in general, there is this idea, uh, as you all know, you see often, that to support someone, whether it is with your time or your talents or a kind word or financially, to support someone in the white positive sphere, there's this notion that somehow it's illegitimate. Somehow the person is illegitimate because they are accepting help. Somehow the the uh they're accepting financial uh, remuneration for the things they're doing somehow invalidates their contribution it does absolutely no such thing we are not going to make anybody rich by supporting these people our artists by giving them a you know a slap on the back showing an expression of appreciation whether it's with a kind word or an offer to maybe somebody does the music and then somebody else will do the video. Somebody does the video and somebody else will write and read the poetry, whatever it is. We work together as a community. The anti-whites have spread this idea and who picks up on it has spread. Well, the anti-whites have spread this idea in our community that any support, particularly financial support, somehow invalidates legitimacy. And who picks up on this? in our community, but the basest of individuals, the most jealous of individuals who would love to be able to contribute something of value and have someone else think that it's valuable enough that they're willing to give $5, that they're willing to give $20 or whatever it is for, their do for what they're doing. So since they can't do that, since they can't build the sand castle on the beach, as a friend of mine, I used to listen to Dietrich many years ago, he gave this analogy. Since they can't build the castle on the beach, their only way to interact with it is to destroy it. That's what these people do. When they show up and they say that is, it is wrong, it invalidates, it shows that they're just shilling, it shows that they're just out there for what all of these different terms, I'm not even gonna bother to say them all, when they come up with these arguments to undermine the good work that our people are doing, they're just demonstrating that they have the ability to create zilch, nothing. Ultimately, that they are losers. If you are one of these people, you don't always have to be a loser. You can make your decision to change now, and we hope that you will. We have all done things that uh, otherwise would categorize us as a loser and we make the decision to do what's right so that we can be the hero, so that we can be the winner in the story. And that is what I'm asking those of you, if you have done that, to change your ways. Instead, be the first one to, to uh, contribute a couple of dollars or a, a kind paragraph to uh, maybe Snow Shadow for the poetry that she's writing now. Let her know that you appreciate deeply the work that she's doing. If she wasn't doing it, it would not be there. So we should absolutely be contributing and thanking her. Now I have, I always share my, my great debt of gratitude with all of these, everyone who has contributed over all of the years, every, certainly everybody who has helped me in the work that I've been uh, doing. But I, I was the one, as you can, if, go ahead and investigate. I was the one who, who got started in the white positive. It was happening nowhere. The one who would thank people right first. If they were big time contributors, they had worked for a long time 
for white well-being, I was the person who would who would say before, even before I was saying white well-being, <clears throat> all the way back to the very beginning, I would shake their hand and say, thank you for your service to our race. Thank you for what you're doing for our people. That would be the first thing. And in some of these cases, some of these greats from from the decades past, like Sam Dixon, would open up the speech and, and say, a young man thanked me for my service to our people today. And then talk about, work that into his speech. That's an actual story. That actually happened. So, but I am out of the funds from my day job and supporting the artists. And I haven't gotten to everyone yet, but I will get to all of them. They will all have a financial support from me out of my day job because I lead by example. So if you want to do what's right, if you want to follow my lead, then you will help to support these people and the good work that they are doing. It means as working folks, we have to cut things out of our, out of our lives, things that we would rather be doing or things that we would take pleasure in or an old habit or maybe all of the beer or the new purse every season for Christ's sake. I mean, come on. Just buy a purse for a year, ladies. You don't you don't need hundreds of pairs of shoes. You know, you don't need sacrifice on on a pair of shoes or what have you and instead give that I don't know how much they cost. I, I guess some of these pairs of shoes that ladies uh, buy are, are quite expensive. I guess men's shoes are as well. Uh, but maybe sacrifice on one of those pairs of shoes and then give to four or five little sums, four or five to our creative people who are doing good work for the cause. Now, what's the difference between somebody who is actual merchant right and somebody who is working for white well-being? Well, here's the easy measuring stick. If they are being aired on my channel and showing up on the afterparty.tv, that's an easy one right there. You know for sure this person is serving white well-being. Uh, no white guilt is not going to be promoting somebody or is not going to be showing somebody's material who is just a merchant right shill who's shown up, doesn't really believe in these things and just wants a few dollars. Now, outside of the work that we are doing, you got to be more careful because if I haven't, uh, or if these people are not in the community, if I haven't shown their material in some fashion, then you'll have to decide for yourself. If they just sh showed up and they've done nothing for white well-being or the or anything in the white positive sphere, and and now they show up, well, you can uh, you can stand back and and wait and see what kind of material they're going to be producing, how long they're going to be producing it, what kind of hardship they're willing to go through to be able to produce it. And you also can tell by the seasons of abundance and, and dearth. So if we come into a season of abundance, you really have to be careful. Abundance meaning that more and more people have their eyes on us, more and more people are going to be likely to be throwing money. So when you see that kind of a situation, you have to be even more careful because you know, as I predicted in the past, that people who are financially uh, strong, who have a lot of contacts, a lot of capital, etc., will show up like Cernovich, like some of these, uh, some of these females who, who showed up and didn't care at all about white well-being. They were just these, uh, these parvenus, you know, they just, they showed up and they, they mouthed the things that we were saying. And then suddenly because they were pretty and they were young, money started pouring into them. Uh, so those kinds of situations you, you ought to be very careful about, but people who have been tested or, and, or people who are around during the lean years or the lean months when there isn't going to be a bunch of money to be made, uh, you can lower that guard a little bit uh, because what kind of an idiot would come in to the white positive sphere to make money in the first place? I mean, there just isn't any. So having said that, let's see what else we have here. I want to give you all a, a warning about the emojis. Let me take a look at talking about 
super chatting. And I want to say also to my all of my friends uh, who are making content, who are making art, poetry, music. I hope there will be paintings. I hope there will be drawings. I hope there will be sculpting. I want to see it all. For all of you, I, I want to say this. Make sure that you feel the gratitude genuinely in your heart. When somebody pats you on the back, let that be the same as if they gave you $1,000. Feel that gratitude genuinely. Let them know how much you appreciate them for sharing with you either their voice, their words, their money, or their time, or whatever it is. If you don't feel that genuinely, you need to do some real interior work. There's something not quite right, and we all are a work in progress. Uh, maybe you're not here for the right reasons. If you're not, then please step out. If it is something you have to work on within yourself, then work on that. Make sure you feel the gratitude genuinely when people reach out in one way or another to support you. Even if it's the 99, you, you sell the song for 99 cents and somebody buys it for 99 cents, that should be the same as a thousand dollars because we are working class people. So feel that contribution genuinely. Thank you for doing that ahead of time. Now, when it comes to these emojis, I haven't seen the problem here before, but uh, YouTube has been deleting channels. So not, not just user channels, not people who are creating content when you drop too many emojis in live chats. Sandrofen says, have to get up early, so can't be here long, but wanted to pop in and say hello. Well, hello to you. Thank you very much for showing up and saying good night. Sweet dreams to you. Dream about white roses and a beautiful future for our people. We are making it happen, and you are among us. Uh, Art Acrobats, super chatting $2.99. Why do whites take so much abuse from non-whites? Well, let me, I would amend that just by saying, why do whites take so much abuse from anti-white non-whites? So that's Art Acrobats, $2.99. Thank you so very much for that contribution to white well-being. And the, the reasons are a plenty. There could be, as I was talking about earlier, a bit of a genetic a propensity to tolerate the other because we tolerate we, we had to be a people who would tolerate each other in long periods of winter in enclosed spaces and very often it meant that we had to take care of people who prepared for the long terrible winters but tragedy struck and now they're at the door and their children are freezing and starving and you're not going to just say, no, you're going to go die. You're going to bring them in and you're all going to tolerate and survive. That might be play a part of it. You didn't have to do that in other parts of the world. Um, so, but also certainly you, we all have been infected with mean pathogens that tell you that you, even though you've done nothing wrong, you are responsible for all of this heinous evil that has been done, not to the person who is in front of you, but to some of their ancestors at some point. And, and maybe if it has anything to do with the person in front of you, then it's something intangible that you can't actually see how they got hurt. You can't actually point to the way they are being injured. It's just something intangible, the death of reason in the West, thanks to the anti-whites. And because of that, our people are even more prone to tolerate indignities, to tolerate offenses. To, and that is something that we are going free of. That is something we are healing ourselves. That's why we are so much different than other movements uh, that have come before, other movements that are active now. That's one of the things that make us so different. If you are not addressing the psychological basis of our poisoning by the anti-whites, your movement, no matter what it's based in, is going to lose. If you are not addressing these two most important factors, the poisoning of our people's mind and spirit and bodies, and this redevelopment of our culture, this re-expressing of who and what we are, reclaiming what is ours. If you're not addressing these two th critical things, the movement will fail, period. 
And anybody who doesn't think so is stupid. And we can maybe get another quote uh, by food police. Anybody who doesn't agree with that is just not bright enough to get it. That's all there is to it. Uh, with the with the throat doing its thing, I have less patience for stupidity. So the emojis thing, ladies and gentlemen, is this. If we get a round of applause for someone or if we get some raucous emojis or something like this, just make it uh, four or five or something like uh, emojis. But certainly don't do a string of emojis and then your next message, another string of emojis, and then the next, another string of emojis. Nothing's going to happen to this channel, but you will be deleted from YouTube, or you might be. This has been happening uh, other places. So just be aware of this, that if you if you think you're going to make a, a send messages with strings of emojis, that you may very well be have your account deleted by YouTube, and they're not listening to anybody's appeals, they're, because they don't because of equality. The equality hires, it's just totally incompetent. And so that is what you end up with. Let's see what else we have here. We have Mrs. Jess Horst, super chatting $9.99 over here on YouTube. Thank you, my dear lady. What a wonderful person you are. Thank you for always being a great participant in this community. Mandy saying hello. Great to see you, Mandy. All right. Spencer's Thoughts, super chatting $34.99 Canadian cents. I guess I should say $34 Canadian dollars and 99 cents. And writing, hi, Jason. My question this week is how do I uh, bait out the mean pathogens in conversation? I've been dealing with them when they come up very well this far, but I like playing offense more than defense. Thanks again for all. Well, you can just, you can take any mean pathogen. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, and thank you uh, very much for that kind super chat. You can take any mean pathogen and they're going to come up daily. If you are talking about being at work and you have a coworker who is, you think might be worthy of helping go free. I guess all white people uh, are worthy, but whether or not, if they're anti-white, you're just not gonna be able to reach them. So we're going after our brothers and sisters who can be reached. So if there's someone at work or at school or what have you, who can be reached, you think you can work on and help them to go free. It's gonna be very easy to find an MP in that environment. So it's if it's at work, there might be classes where you have to study anti-whiteism and learn about how evil our people are or something going on in the news. There's always going to be something going on in the news, even if they're in sports. Say, for example, you're up there in Canada. So I think the isn't the main sport hockey in Canada, I would imagine. Let's say <clears throat> the main sport is, is hockey, probably is, and your colleague or fellow student, what have you, is really into hockey. One of the things you can bring up is this excessive spotlighting of the non-white athletes in hockey. I've had this uh, shared with me many times. I had people uh, write me, and I guess it's a specific guy, share minutes of time during hockey games that were spent on the non-white athlete doing nothing. <laughs> and it's four or five times the amount of airtime that the white athletes on the ice are getting. The actually, somebody might be really great on the ice, scoring the goals, but they're not getting the, the opportunity. Uh, they're not getting the talking time. So that can be a great opportunity to bring up uh, the MPs associated with why they would be doing that in the sports news, MCs, which will cure uh, the your your audience of the idea that it's appropriate to do that, that it's a good thing, to, that they should discriminate against the white athletes, even if they're the ones who should be talked about because they're the ones scoring or they're whatever is going on in the game. But they're highlighting the non-white athletes simply because he's non-white. So that would be a, a great way to bring it up. And if you have some specific scenarios, if you could tag me 
and uh, maybe next week uh, we can speak to a very specific specific scenario. So thank you very much for that. Jason Allen, super chatted $9.99. Thank you, Jason. So I support white well-being and I send my love and hope to everyone here. Thank you all. Well, thank you, Jason. Uh, a splendid verbiage there and a splendid super chat. Thank you so much, dear friend. We are a community of love. We are a community of healing and redemption. And that is why we are going to win. Barbie Chan, super chatting by way of the familiar alternative, $5. Thank you so much, my dear lady. I believe our people turn to materialism to fill a void. They do indeed. Brilliantly written. Absolutely brilliantly written. Don't fall victim to replacing your sense of tribal belonging with meaningless material objects. Love your people. That is absolutely sagacious. Thank you, my dear lady. Wonderfully written. Thank you for the kind super chat. Absolutely. Our people have a great void inside of them. That is something else that isn't going to be filled by simply a new banner or a new religious symbol or an old religious symbol or whatever it is. It doesn't fill the void that is left when you are taught to deny, hate, and reject your bio spirit, your true identity. You can't replace that. Now, what clever advertisers do is they take the pair of shoes or they take the, the car and they show the person, they show the results. This is how advertising works. They show the results and the results in the eyes of those who are enjoying those items is, ah, the void appears to be filled. The void is filled by that great black hole in our hearts where our bio spirit, our love for ourselves, our love for our ancestors, our love for our children and the children to come thereafter, where that has been ripped out of us. We don't even know what it is anymore. They think, ah, well, if I get that Mustang, if I get that if I get that new handbag or whatever, this look at the faces on these people, the void is filled. And then they go and buy it. And a few days later, they find out that the item was meretricious. It looked like it was going to be the panacea. It looked like it was going to remedy the hurt. And then they have it and the hurt isn't remedied. They can't even put their finger on what the hurt is because they haven't heard from you yet. They haven't heard from me. They haven't heard from Jared George. They haven't heard from Poseidon. They don't know that it's the bio spirit inside them that they're being denied. That's where they really hurt. You do. So many of you now have shared your testimony of once you finally focused in on what was really missing in your lives. And once you began to nurture it again, everything began to change. There was an aha moment when you finally realized that that was what was missing. And then there was that feeling of progress finally being made instead of something temporary. And, and, and you can throw right in with the new Mustang and right in with the new handbag. What is it? Louis Vuitton now that all the, all the wealthy ladies have, uh, you could throw right in with that. You could throw religious symbols in with that. You could throw flags in with that, new flags, old flags. You could throw doctrines in with that, new doctrines, old doctrines. Throw them all into that same pile of something that you think is going to fill that void inside of you. That thing, trust me, that we knew was there, that we knew was our living, beating heart and soul in us long before we knew about any ideologies or any religions or any cars invented by our people or any Louis Vuitton bags or, or the thought of even having a, a handbag to carry something in to arrived at anyone. We knew long before any of that where and what we came from. And it has been poisoned by the anti-whites. So thank you very much. Beautifully written, uh, Barbie Chan. We have Raymond over here on the familiar alternative, super chatting $5. Hats off to you, good sir, for being here all the time. And here, uh, I know over on, uh, as a moderator on D Live, let me refresh these screens and we will keep rolling, ladies and gentlemen. I will check, I will check the, 
entropy in just one moment and we will keep rolling so that we can wrap it up before my voice decides to wrap it up. My father told me, and I've had this mindset my whole life as well, that he went dirt bike riding one day. And of course, I had this mindset because I got it from him. My father, he went dirt bike riding one day. And at the very beginning of the ride, they had they had trailered the bikes. Well, not trailer, they were just in the back of pickups, some great distance, some to go to someplace really different to go dirt bike riding. And uh, they, they rolled the bikes off, they took off, and within minutes, he had laid the bike down and hit his knee, cracking the kneecap. I uh, didn't know that at the time, but cracking the kneecap. And as you can imagine, well, it, the kneecap got cracked because it hit a boulder. And as you can imagine, that was extremely painful. But my father, being the kind of man that he was, said some choice words for the knee. And he said, I'm going anyhow. I'm going to ride today anyhow. I don't care what you, my knee, I don't care what your condition you're in. I don't care how bad you hurt. I'm going to ride today because I came here to ride today. And that is how I've taken that same mindset plenty of times. And it's a mindset that, especially for a lot of you guys out there, if you really want to be a real man, that's the mindset that you have to have. Do away with this concern that modern anti-white civilization has given us, that you have to be pretty, that you have to, everything has to work just right. You have to be like that modern sports have given us, that everything has to be sculpted just right. You need to be in this like scientifically measured perfect scenario of shape and and fitness to be able to win that game bravo sierra this is the real world we are in you're supposed to have scars especially if you're a man you're supposed to have be broke up you're supposed to to uh go even when it does the body doesn't want to go anymore so that's just a little side uh additional message and the larger message that we are sharing here today. And I believe it, it, a, a great example of that is uh, that toughness is exhibited by uh, Seaver's father who took a spill and uh, he's an older gentleman, took a spill and yet he's uh, the other day and yet he's still pressing on. So we imagine that that, that spirit is uh, alive and well in our moderator Seaver. So great to have you, brother. So we have uh, Goys of Summer, super chatting $13.37. Thank you so very much. Jason, thank you for your beautiful work. Ever since I was introduced to your show, I have a much better general sense of well being. It is a breath of fresh air to someone who is usually black pilled. Well, God bless you. Goys of Summer, thank you so much for that testimony, for sharing that with us. What kind of folks, and thank you so very much for that kind super chat, what kind of people are going to win? You go to you go to these other places in the white positive sphere and out in, of course, the conservative uh, environment and the, even the nationalist environment, and everybody's always down. Everybody's Everything's always depressing. Everything's always another loss. Everything's talking about another thing that's gone bad, thing that's ugly. What kind of folks does that create? And do people who are miserable and depressed, morose, do they ever win anything? Or is it the group of people that are the most excited, the people who are most ready to take on the challenge with both hands? Are they the ones who win? Those are the ones who always are victorious. They will stumble. They will have things go wrong. Th days will be ugly and yet they will start anew at the beginning of every day <clears throat> they won't give up and we don't give up here for white well-being absolutely you need only look into if you don't have uh, babies if it, if you do you're blessed to be able to look into their eyes for the motivation but you need to just go on to a search engine look up some beautiful white babies look into the eyes in those photographs or those videos or what have you 
and then tell me that you don't have the energy to walk through fire. If you can look at that and you don't find the energy to walk through fire for our well-being, then something is broken in you and you need to get to work real fast because you are a seriously incomplete and, and defunct person. You, your heart is still beating, you're still alive, but you're nonetheless defunct. So thank you so very much for sharing that, Goys of Summer. That is a fantastic testimony. $13.37. Jason, thank you for your beautiful work. Ever since I was introduced to your show, I have a much better general sense of well-being. It is a breath of fresh air to someone who is usually black-pilled. Well, we want to see good things from you. I'm going to challenge you, Goys of, Goys of Summer. I'm going to challenge you to get into a chat somewhere else, to get into a thread somewhere else, and to tell those people there the kind of energy you have now. Tell them why you have this energy. Tell them now why you're able to act rather than be miserable and just let the world melt down around us. Tell them why you're able to pick up the fire extinguisher and start putting out the fire. And then I want to hear back from you. Godspeed to you. I salute you. Thank you for that. Nancy Drew asks, do you have a P.O. box? And if so, could you list it, please? Thank you. Nancy, I will be listing my P.O. box. Maybe I'll do it uh, maybe in the next couple of days on my website, knowwhyguilt.org. And then once the website gets, uh, that website is revamped, I'm going to have a page where that P.O. box will be uh, all the time. Everyone will be able to find it. And I will just put up with the stupid things the anti-whites send me. Spencer's Thoughts says, specific scenario is when I have a known anti-white in front of me and want to call them out in front of a group so as to cure more people at once. Well, okay, uh, briefly, I will say this. If you have an anti-white in front of you, and you have others watching, you can say to the anti-white, Mr. or Mrs. Anti-White, you would never condemn a Jewish person for fighting for Jewish well-being, right? And of course, they're going to say, of course not. You would never condemn a black person for struggling and serving black well-being, right? And they're going to agree to that as well. And then you say, and this particularly is powerful if the anti-white is also white, because then you can add this little bit on the end. You can say, well, I am merely serving white well-being. So you can say, if the person is white, you can say, so the Jewish person is healthy, the black person is healthy, I'm healthy, you are the only one unhealthy in this scenario. And I can promise you this, Spencer's thoughts, that anti-white will absolutely melt down. And everyone watching is going to think, even if they don't say it, if, if you are able to read on people's faces those thoughts, as so many are, able to read the thoughts that pass through someone, uh, someone's mind and see it in their eyes, you'll see that they're, they think to themselves, my God, that's true. All of those people are acting in a way that is completely healthy, except for the one who wants to destroy his own kind. And of course, if they are non-white, then it's going to look even worse that they're going to say that, it's okay for them to fight for their own kind, but it's not okay for you. And remember, the argument that an anti-white always, let me, not maybe not always, it happens so often we can say always as legitimate hyperbole, but they'll, they'll resort to this, white people don't need it because white people control society. Well, first of all, it's our society. We built it, jackass. We should be in the heights. We should be the executives. When the anti-whites say, when the anti-whites say that, well, you know, 30 years from now or in the past, uh, you looked at these big Fortune 500 companies or what have you, and you know, you, you had 90% uh, of the of the executives were were white, or 80% of the executives were white. The country was 90% white until the 1960s. But what you can point out to the anti-white, the reality is this, 
not only did we build it and it should be ours, just as the Chinese built their country and it should be theirs, but the white people in these institutions, in the positions of leadership are all to a man and woman anti-white. And whenever they reveal that they're not anti-white, they are immediately persecuted as a heretic, immediately drawn before, dragged before those anti-white tribunals. And they are browbeaten publicly. And if they are not fired or expelled from where they are, they incur permanent stains on their records. That's all you need to say. I've done it many times before. Nothing special about me. You all can do everything I'm doing. You all can do every single thing that I'm doing. You do that, and that group of people watching are going to say, holy God, that guy or that gal just made a mighty powerful point, and there is no rebutting that. Yes, no one, no white person in government or in business can say anything other than anti-white without being persecuted for doing so. So they're not. And yes, when a country is 90, 80, 70 percent of a particular type of people, of course, the executives are going to be 90, 80, 70 percent of that type of people, even if all of the IQs are the exact same, even if all of the other instinctual behaviors. And remember what I say here in service to white well-being, what we all should be saying is it's not IQ that makes us different. Because you don't get, you know, if they say the average East Asian IQ is 106, when a white person gets up to 106 IQ, they don't suddenly start acting like an Asian. The big difference is instinct, the bio spirit. Just like the different breeds or races of dogs or different breeds or races of hyena or, uh, or a rhino or anything else out there, instinct is what makes these things different. So it's the instinct. But even if we all had the exact same instinct, you would still see greater numbers because it's like the lottery at that point. How many people, you know, if you hold 90% of the tickets for a lottery and some other group holds 2% of the ticket for the lottery, how likely are they going to win the executive slot? All right, let's see what else we have here. Let's get on to, and I'm going to say this, and I'll continue looking at uh, your questions and statements and super chats, but let's get a, now remember, maybe four, five, six emojis, but not a line of them and not line after line of them from you. You could probably actually give an entire line of emojis and be fine as long as you just didn't do it line after line. That was what uh, got people in trouble. So let's get some raucous emojis and some applause for D.B. Cooper, ladies and gentlemen, who I mentioned earlier in the stream. D.B. Cooper has purchased a dozen copies of Go Free, second edition, from NoWhiteGillCollectibles.com. One for him, the rest he's giving away. Now, if you want, if you have such a purchase you want to make, reach out to me. You can do so on DM on Twitter. You can, if you find the, the P.O. box when I put that up on my website, you could reach out to one of the mods and, and they could help get, get you in touch with me. I, you can get in touch with me somewhere on NoWhiteGillCollectibles.com. I think it's by signing up for mailers. You're able to send me a message. Reach out to me and I will give you a better rate than you would otherwise have by just purchasing straight. So if you have... You want to get a bunch of these go free second edition books to hand them out like the absolute hero, D.B. Cooper. Just to, and let me tell you something. He's got a great name. It's a great American story. The guy, well, great. I guess it's infamous. The guy uh, stole a bunch of money and then parachuted out of an airplane and nobody ever saw him again. He probably got away with it, but some researchers think he died. He's got D.B. Cooper has this great name, but D.B. Cooper is a working class guy. He does not have a briefcase full of hundreds of thousands of dollars. He's got a great name, but he's a working class person like us. So he, being a working class person, has decided he wants to reach out to those near him. And uh, perhaps he's thinking that this is a great opportunity Christmas coming up. And if you all, this is a great opportunity. If you're thinking that you love someone to whatever degree it might be in your life, 
brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, sons, daughters. I've had people purchase these books, reach out to me with questions. How can I help this? How can I help that member of my family, friends that you love, whoever it might be, you want to, if you truly love them, there's, there's few things more loving you can do than to put them on the right path to cure them of white noir, ladies and gentlemen. There is, I, I mean, maybe if, if they had cancer and you had the cure to cancer, that would be better because you could deal with the acute problem right now. But other, short of something like that, they are suffering grievously from white noir. You can put them on the right path and it can be as easy as giving them a go free second edition. It can be as easy as giving them a born guilty, a copy of born guilty. Neither of these books, if you are unfamiliar with them, have anything in them that resembles the, the archetypes that the anti-whites have given us in the verbiage, in the iconography, in the, I'm, I'm not like any of that. And they won't find any of that in those books. So your friend that you hope will go, you want to help go free, you want to help that person cure themselves of white noir, they're not going to open these books and say, oh, there's the anti the bad guy in the anti-white narrative that's not going to happen by looking in these books so if you want to give somebody the gift of life by helping them to treat their white noir then you can get these books from me if you want to get a, a, a bunch of them at once for uh, reach out to me and we'll get you a better price to make it happen as many as possible i've done this numerous times i've paid myself for this to happen for some folks where they could afford so much, but they had specifically so many people. Uh, I paid myself to help make it happen. Reach out to me. I can't do that often because I am working class like you all. Reach out to me. We'll make it the best price we possibly can. And we can be like the hero DB Cooper, who is going to be reaching out with this gift of love to his friends uh, and family. God bless you, D.B. Cooper, for that heroism. NoWhiteGoCollectibles.com, ladies and gentlemen. Again, if you want to get more than one, uh, Christmas is coming. And you can reach out to me and we will get you a best possible price that we can. Mrs. Jess Horst, super chatted again, $9.99. Another $9.99, my dear lady. Thank you so much. She writes, I can never have enough money to make myself happy materialistically. I had lots of children who became my pearls, diamonds, emeralds, and rubies. And I have felt very blessed and rich indeed. What a beautiful thing to write. What an absolutely heartfelt, beautiful thing to write. That is magnificent, Mrs. Horst. Thank you so much. I can never have enough money to make myself happy materialistically. I had lots of children the children, ladies and gentlemen, who became her pearls, diamonds, emeralds, and rubies. And she's been blessed and feels very rich indeed. Well, thank you so much for that wonderful super chat, those great words. Bless you. We love you, Mrs. Horst. Okay, over here on the familiar alternative, Brand Danger, super chatting $5. The non-white president of the National Teachers Union has said we teachers are failing non-white students because we are not acknowledging our society operates within inherently racist systems. This is this is such Bravo Sierra that you have, if you're a teacher, ladies and gentlemen, that you have to put up with this garbage like Brand Danger. This totally intangible thing that we can't, and this is a president of the National Teachers Union? What, whatever happened to the scientific method in teaching? Whatever happened to ha having to have a null hypothesis for Christ's sake in education? If you cannot touch this intangible thing, then how do you know it exists? What a piece of human waste. Brent Danger goes on to write, I will be sending her my reply and leaving the union. God bless you. Very good. Uh, please, I hope you will, will include some, some stuff from uh, uh, Aristotle 
and Francis Bacon because they would be absolutely sickened by these, these religious zealots who are now in education and who are poisoning the minds of our children. Because you know what? It's not the failing the non-white students because they're, they're already giving preferential treatment to the non-white students. No, it's you are not poisoning the white students enough. That's what this woman is saying, the president of the teachers union. What a piece of filth. Remember, she's the kind of person who is responsible for these white children that we have in video saying that they hate being white and they'll do anything they can to not be white. This is the kind of woman who's responsible for that. Thank you very much, Brand Danger, for sharing with us what's going in in that insidious, what has now become an insidious profession with few heroes left in it. And let me tell you, when you have heroes left in a place like that, it is truly an amazing thing. They are truly spectacular, scintillating individuals, ladies and gentlemen. When you have somebody who is still in an environment like that, and you know Brand Danger isn't doing that for his own welfare. He's doing that for the white children that are coming through those schools. He's trying to protect them. He's trying to give them a little bit of love for themselves, a little bit of truth, a little bit of dignity that they know that he knows that they've been denied before arriving in his class, and he knows they will be denied after they leave. That's why he's there. He's not putting up with that kind of garbage from the president of the union because he just likes that. He is sacrificing himself for the good of our babies. So bless you. Let's get a round of applause for Brand Danger. $5 Super Chat. Thank you so much for doing. Thank you for sharing this information with us. How absolutely despicable. Society operates with an inherently racist system. It does. Uh, it's the, it's the anti-white system that is discriminatory against white people. Are we not forced in all of our environments to watch ourselves being passed over and replaced by lesser qualified non-whites because they're non-white? Or all of our work and educational environments not being made increasingly comfortable for non-whites, no matter how uncomfortable it gets for us? Aren't we dragged before the anti-white tribunals? Aren't we forced to constantly fear social lynching, which begins with some anti-white slur and then often ends in ostracism and character and career assassination? Aren't all of our contributions to humanity being belittled and denied? Isn't all of society set up so that it advances, enriches, and empowers non-whites at the expense of detriment to and ruination of our people and therefore of us as individuals? And aren't we forbidden from complaining about it? Because if we complain about it, it proves that we're evil somehow. Aren't we forced then with our intelligence, our dollars, our energy, our time, to harmonize the diversity that is supposed to be such a big strength to us? And isn't that massive, uh, th that redirecting and revectoring of all of that energy, time, and money, doesn't that harm us in all spheres of our lives? What diseases could we have conquered by now if we hadn't wasted so much on harmonizing the diversity? Our suffering doesn't matter. Our joy doesn't matter. Whether or not we succeed in life doesn't matter. All that matters is non-white suffering, non-white joy, non-white misery, whether or not a non-white person succeeds in life. All of that conveys to every single one of you the reality, including our babies, that the regime puts a very low value on us as a people and therefore a very low value on you as a member of that people. Yeah, there is a prejudicial system in society and it's anti-white. And you can tell, Brand Danger, you can tell that bitch that for me. Despicable. What a despicable piece of filth she is. Spencer's thoughts, super chatting again, 27 Canadian dollars, 99 cents. Thank you, my good sir. And in writing, thanks for the advice. Always sharp as a tack. My other request, give me and other single white males a challenge for the week. I'll let you know how it went on the next stream, along with some cash to make it worth it. Well, thank you very much. I was—I just gave that uh, 
the challenge a little earlier and I'll just extend the challenge to everyone, uh, male and female in this community. Let's hear from you between now and then. What stream did you go on and talk about white well-being? What thread did you get on somebody else's video and talk about going free? What blog did you get on? What newspaper website did you get on? What did you write there? Did you challenge that despicable anti-white editor and author? Did you put that anti-white on that YouTube channel in place? Now, remember, you got to be careful on these platforms owned by anti-whites. So if you want to say that the creator of the content is a disgusting, wretched human, human being, you can say it this way. There are many who would think that someone talking like you are talking is a disgusting, wretched human being. Just phrase it like that and you won't have your account shut down. I learned the hard way. If you say to them, this is what you are, then they, they'll just cry to their anti-white brethren at the platform level and they will snip you free of that platform in a heartbeat. But if you say someone speaking like you, and there are many people who would think this way of someone speaking like you, there's nothing they can do. You're not intimidating. You're not bullying. You're, you're providing a, a viewpoint. And that's what these places are supposed to be about. And what's important about that is that the anti-whites don't want these places to be about that, but they have to continue the ruse because they know that all those scores of millions of white people out there will become very angry if they learn that free discussion and exchange of ideas is in reality not permissible whatsoever. So do that, and if any of you do that, come back and share uh, what happened, or if it's something you're particularly proud of, if nothing happened, but you got to share it, if it's something you're proud of, come back and share it. It can be next week, it could be the week after, whatever it is, but let's see, let's let's put this, we are participants in the uh, service to white well-being. There is no one in the stands here. We are all on the field. Trust me, you, you go to other, air, you go to other, spheres in the white positive sphere and you have a giant stage with with one person on the stage and all the stadium's lights on him or her and he might allow or she might allow a, a person to walk up on the stage for a moment and then walk down the other steps on the other side but that's how it looks in the rest of these movements what happens here is we're all on the field we are all making it happen we are all valuable. We can all contribute and we all are contributing. So thank you all for that. All right, let's get, now we just talked about DB Cooper. Let's talk about very briefly, I received a, an absolutely magnificent journal, create your own book by esoteric traditions. This came to my PO box with a wonderful letter. And I will read that in just a moment. I want to show you this first, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this. This is the cover to this. This will be, isn't that beautiful? Sent to me. So what it is, it's, a, it's actually a, a journal. And there are rings that come with it. They go through here. You paint this. So uh, I guess I'll ask you all, what color do you think my Go Free journal should be? What color should I make it? It gives you instructions. You're supposed to seal it first and then you paint it. This is Esoteric Traditions sent me this. This is Glenn and Kim. Dear Jason, we at Esoteric Traditions wanted to say thank you for your hard work and the passion that you give to, white, to the white well-being movement. Your books and video streams continue to have a giant impact on us inspiring us and giving us clarity and direction as we forge ahead in this anti-white world. We wanted to show you our support by presenting you this custom made, create your book by Esoteric Traditions, Go Free Journal, magnificent. And their website, ladies and gentlemen, that these good people have where they are doing this work is esoterictraditions.net. If one of my mods could 
find that and then drop that link in the chat. That would be splendid. I would appreciate that deeply. Esoteric Traditions dot net. Thank you so much. This is a this is a magnificent gift. And uh, I, ladies and gentlemen, if you are doing good work and you are in service to white well-being, we are going to highlight you and the work that you are doing. You just got and they and they sent a they sent a bookmark with it. Uh, it's a lovely thing. Once I have it painted, I'll show you all again, and then maybe we'll think about what I could put inside. Regrettably, the paper the paper is blank that it comes with. I don't think it has lines. Regrettably, I cannot draw at all. <laughs> so we're gonna have to find something else for me to put. I can write just fine. So it'll have to be verbiage, or maybe I'll I can put um, I can. I can glue or staple uh, wonderful letters like that in there. So thank you so much to you all. A wonderful book. And uh, yeah, let me let you all let me know what you think I should uh, paint that. So a big uh, round of applause for EsotericTraditions.net for sending that to me, doing good work for white well-being. And we have a Dragon Lord. I, I like that. 14 pounds from Dragon Lord over here on YouTube. Thanks for all that you do for white well-being. By everything going on right now, I've been inspired to return to my own writing in addition to my chemistry studies, which I am resuming August 2020. Well, fantastic, fantastic. Resume your path in life. Go after your dreams. Thank you so much and make sure, as I have my whole life, my whole life, I have made sure that I have pursued the things that I'm inspired by and interested in and I have served white well-being every single moment of that time. Stay on that path, serve white well-being. We salute you, thank you so much. And thank you for returning to your writing. Uh, and uh, perhaps we'll see you in print one of these days uh, as may maybe writing columns or a book or something of that nature. And uh, we are glad to have played a part in reigniting that flame in you. We are doing the exciting things, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to see many new and marvelous things coming forward. And you never know who you might touch in the world and what might come of that contact. You never know when you begin going free, when you begin treating those mean pathogens inside of you, you begin accessing more of that latent ability that resides in all Westmen, that latent genius, that latent physical, mental, and spiritual genius and ability. You never know what fire might catch inside of you. Things that you never knew you were capable or even imagined that you could be capable of before. So stay on this path. We'll see good things from you and the good things from those you come in contact with. Thank you very much, Dragon Lord. So we also wanna men mention the absolutely charming painted rocks that were found in a uh, uh, in a park by Danny Girl on uh, on Twitter. If you if you look for Danny Girl on Twitter, let's get a big round of applause for Danny Girl uh, on Twitter. She's a wonderful woman. She found baskets baskets of rocks that were beautifully painted and. Uh, said things like no white guilt and go free on them. I'm sure, I'm sure that if she found baskets full of these rocks in the park, that there are baskets more lying about in the park for others to find. What a marvelous park that might be. A big love you and thank you to Danny Girl for finding those wonderful rocks in the park. A magical place. Thank you very much for that, Danny Girl. And here's another one, ladies and gentlemen. This is another big contribution. I forgot the name he said he wanted me to use, so he will be anonymous for right now. I think we're going to have more than one anonymous. Uh, anonymous printed up 10,000 leaflets. 10,000 leaflets. He made, they are fantastic leaflets. What I, what I saw, uh, beautiful they are right to the point, no white guilt. They got the website. They look fantastic. I think they got an image of Born Guilty on the front of them. If you would like some 
free. He is going to provide them to you free to distribute on the proviso that they're going to be distributed in lawful areas, of course, nowhere illegal. If the anti-white should pick them up and redistribute them somewhere where they it is illegal to distribute them, that is on the anti-whites. You will be distributing them somewhere where it is legal. And if you want these, if you want some of these uh, leaflets, maybe you want 300, maybe you want 800, uh, maybe you want 1300, you know how many you can actually deliver. No wasting here. You know if you can actually deliver. And here's the thing he told me. He said he gets marvelous exercise when he leaflet drops. He has burned his law. He's losing weight. Uh, he's lost weight. He's in, in, the, in the process of getting into better shape by taking these long walks where he lawfully distributes these fantastic leaflets. He printed up 10,000 on his dime. He is cutting them up with his, his effort. He's going to be splicing them and cutting them into the, the proper shape. And if you want to distribute them, uh, he and I will take care of the postage. So you make sure you get in touch with me and he and I will take care of the postage. We will get you those leaflets and we want to see some photographs of some lawful places. You don't have to do this, but it would be nice to get a lawful place where you're allowed to put a leaflet that the leaflets are have been placed and uh, they are reaching those who, for whom it might do an infinite amount of good. So that is another, a big round of applause for this gentleman, uh, for this financial investment, for this time investment, for this effort investment, uh, doing great work for us. Thank you so much, good sir, 10,000 flyers. We also have another anonymous, a, at this time a uh, young lady, and uh, this young lady is uh, a, conducting a targeted mail campaign where she is, and you all can do this as well, uh, where she is writing businesses that have a, a reason for, uh, for her to write them and businesses that, uh, especially places that have a lot of uh, clientele that are regulars like pubs and things like this, where they might even post the the thank you letter and she's thanking them for different reasons and uh, so you can write maybe maybe it's a place that set a record in your town for x y or z or a place who uh, a business that always contributes to the little league or something of this nature you write this letter out and then she is saying some using some go free verbiage and then signing it in a way you know, for white well-being or something like this and sending it off. This is a way to normalize who we are to people who matter, to people who are contributing to the community, to people who are hardworking at di different types of businesses, firehouses, all of these types of things. To our folks, obviously don't send something like this to a business that is going to be offended uh, so if it's businesses owned by an anti-white, non-white person, you know, find out who's behind the business. Don't send it off to somebody who's going to say white well-being. Well, they, you know, th that anti-white person that owns that business wants to do nothing but harm white people. And so they're going to be offended. And then you can put, uh, as this woman is putting, a return address that is not your actual return address, uh, should you be worried about whether or not it might land in the hands of someone who is anti-white and they're going to look up this address. <clears throat> so marvelous, big round of applause for her, her as well. Both of those, everybody today, thank you so much for the good work uh, that you are doing. The targeted mail campaign is a great idea. Now, I think what we'll do now is we're briefly going to talk about Jesse Lee Peterson, and then we are going to play the great song by Luke Mason, his part two, Luke Mason, also known as Imminent Rain, is, is an absolutely magnificently talented artist like Four Null and Johnny Saad, many of, many of the others uh, who are creating content, big rising stars in service to white well-being. And Luke has decided that he is going to put 
Prometheus Rising, my story that's inside of Born Guilty and will soon be a standalone book. He's going to put that to music. He's going to tell the story with his music and lyrics in his songs. And he has uh, recently re premiered the other day this part two, Merchant of Shame. It's a 10 part album that he is making. And we'll play that right after this. We get a few more questions and super chats. We'll talk about Jesse Lee and we will get to that song. Budapest Babe is over here. I say hello to you uh, on uh, Gardening with NWG. And discuss the 300. I'll have to I'll have to look at some of the other messages to see exactly. That was a little earlier. Brand Danger writing on Gardening Channel. You got it, Jason. It will be a good reply. Well, <laughs> I bet you that vicious anti-white squatting in the slime of her office is going to have something to read when she receives that letter from a disgruntled union member who wants all of those teachers to poison the white children at their schools. No, thank you. Heidi, Laura says, Heidi says to look at D Live. Okay, over here on D Live. We have something going on. Now, if somebody is, I've got to figure out how this works. If people give, I see there's a lot of stickers. And I was watching Poseidon the other day, and he disabled the stickers because there were just too many stickers coming in. I don't know if I should bother with that at the moment or not. What is happening over here on D Live? Hello to everyone who is over there. I will absolutely do my utmost best to remember to distribute the that chest. I will check while we're playing the music, the fantastic piece. I will check the moderator thread to see if there's something that I should be seeing on D Live. But a big hello to everybody that's over there. Oh, wait a second. Looks like somebody gave me a ninjet. Is that what it is? It, if that's what it is, who gave me the ninjet? <laughs> How do I find the ninjet? Raymond, help me out. Did somebody give me a ninjet? Write it over there. Oh, Heidi says, yes. Somebody gave me a ninjet. Well, a big thank you to whoever gave me the ninjet over on D Live because that, I think the ninjet is equivalent of $100. Is that right? Or am I wrong? Somebody's going to have to help me out. I think the lemon is a penny. Who gave me... Yes, a ninjet. Vicky says, "Ninjet, who gave who can who donated the ninjet? A big thank you. Did they write a? I see the the. If I click on, there's an X though. If I click on that, I don't. Does anybody know if I click on it at the top of the chat, what will happen? Does it make me deny it or something? There's an X there. <laughs> Everybody knows that when you're dealing with these things." You click on it, and then suddenly everything unravels. How many times have you all had that with uh, computing? You see something, and you're like, well, should I click this? And it's like the red button in the movies. You click it, and then it's the detonation button. Okay, I'm going to click the ninja and see what happens. Galaxy Class. Thank you. Galaxy Class has contributed a ninja. Thank you so much. $100. Seaver says, uh, I know as, uh, that, that he knows as much as I do, which is nothing about the life. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, Galaxy Class, thank you so much. $100 on DLive. God bless you. Thank you for that. Now all I got to do is figure out how to get money out of DLive. Check out Iodine and IQ Connection. Great content. 
Thank you so much for that, Galaxy Class. That's what uh, the uh, Galaxy Class is talking about. I think the low iodine uh, during the uh, childhood years and it playing a role in undermining IQ. I think there is a bit of a hope there that a big thank you though. And if we over there, if we could get a round of applause for Galaxy class uh, for contributing a Ninjet $100 over there on D Live. Uh, I think there's a bit of a hope there. There has been for some time this hope that we could elevate IQ beyond what, and this is so sad, not, not you galaxy class. I, I, I mean, in general, the people have this has ha have had this hope. A lot of white people. I only see it come out of white people. I've never seen an Asian person. I, and, and I have had over the years, a lot of non-white colleagues, coworkers, friends, and been in conversations with them. I've never heard a non-white person say, you know, I just wish we could elevate everybody's IQ. So we all have the same, never heard that only out of white people. What is wrong with you? I mean, what is wrong with white people that they always want to elevate the IQ as though if you were to take, I don't know, if you were to take something as vicious as the inbred pit bulls were, and I know a lot of people are doing work with the pit bulls, so don't write to me about how it's your black dog and all of this sort of stuff. We could actually, we'll talk some other day about this weird desire that many white women have to redeem the reputations of things like this show, um, pit bulls and parolees. I mean, it's, it is, I saw a commercial, I've seen a commercial for this several times. And I saw it in a magazine commercial for it, an ad for it, pit bulls. And so you want to take these, these people who are not, you know, they, They've done something to be jailed for some period of time. Maybe they're good now, maybe they're not. But then you also take the pit bulls who are known for mauling children. I mean, you just look at the, the actuary results that, re, that insurance companies do. This is why you pay far more for your home insurance or your renter's insurance if you have a pit bull because they eat children. Uh, that's a problem. So the breed has a problem. And yeah, maybe you've got a great one. Uh, uh, more power to you. I love animals. Uh, maybe you got a great one. Maybe he's the, 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 or she's the softer and sweeter than any other dog ever. Maybe, but this idea that, you know, it's somehow you're going to redeem the, the, the reputation of all parolees and all pit bulls is, is I don't I only see it affecting, afflicting, uh, unfortunately, our, uh, many of our white women, but many those are not good white women like we have in this community. They're also anti-white. You see who see who they're supporting in their politics. See who they're supporting. It's, it's something is wrong with them. Uh, they're broken people. But I say that because do you really think if you could elevate the intelligence of a pit bull, of one of the ones that eat kids, and elevate it to that of a poodle? that which, which we all know arguably the smartest uh, dog on the planet. It's called the French Poodle, but it's actually from Germany. You take that intelligence and you put it into the pit bull, that somehow the pit bull would be a French Poodle? No, it would just find better ways to eat kids. That's what would happen. And so this idea that uh, you're going to elevate IQ well, first of all, this Flynn effect about, of IQ has been proven a total fraud. It was hyped up as such things are always hyped up that, oh, you're just going to improve the nutrition and uh, in places where they have low IQ. And suddenly, there, everybody's going to have the same IQ wrong. The IQ, of course, when you improve nutrition, is going to go up to the genetic potential of the animal, be it a, a human, whatever race or breed it is, or any other animal. If you are significantly malnourishing, and mind you this, ladies and gentlemen, the, um, a, mammal, a mammal's ability to endure this uh, lack of nutrients is amazing. The animal will still grow. It will still be, it's, even with horrible privation. So a little bit of uh, malnutrition isn't going to radically reduce IQ or radically reduce how tall the animal would get massive 
malnutrition will. So the Flynn effect, all the anti-whites went crazy saying, oh, look, we'll be everybody. Ought, the only reason why. Now, never mind the fact that when you look at these certain groups and we can't even name them because all of this may or may not be true, uh, who are in on another continent whose IQ when measured is lower, those same individuals on this continent and when whose IQ are measured is lower and yet they're obese with all the, the sh garbage they can eat. Their IQ hasn't equaled everyone, uh, the, the other groups who are eating the same morbidly obese making foods. So this is stupid. So the Flynn effect was stupid. The people that supported it were stupid. Uh, they were they were they were in their lands of hopes and dreams for anti-whiteism, and, and and you hear these people like Stefan Molyneux saying, "Oh, it hurts him so much because you just can't elevate." It doesn't hurt me at all that nature is nature. That's the way it is. That is just the way it is. We have to accept the way it is and be adults for Christ's sake. And here's the thing. So what happens? What happens to the iodine? It's it's like with the nutrients in general. If the IQ, if a, if a growing mammal is deprived of nutrients, then that is going to retard the achievement of its potential to whatever degree, iodine being one of the substances. Well, they say, well, they, they then extrapolate. If you were to give children iodine and the IQ goes up as they grow, and therefore they're not malnourished, maybe you could take iodine as an adult and elevate the IQ of adults. No, that is perfectly stupid. And here's what else is stupid and sad as well. If you could have a miracle substance that would elevate the IQ of this group over here so that you would raise them up, what would this group do? Would they just not take the miracle substance? No, they would be taking the miracle substance too. So you would have, instead of having this, you would have this. You would still have the disparity. Do I have to do all the thinking for these people? I mean, this is so, so I feel bad for those. Yes, if, uh, if a child is malnourished, then they might fall short of their potential. Here is the, and I've talked about this before. I have resolved this. I talked to top researchers who are looking into IQ. And I, I asked them about differences in the brain and how this would, I, I'm not going to go into the whole thing. We don't have time. In fact, I have to be leaving here to go to an IRL for the next couple of days. As soon as I'm done. So I can't, we can't do as long tonight. And I don't even know if my voice is going to last, but these people hadn't even gotten into the specific study of aspects of the brain that, and these are the academic peacocks that haven't gone far enough down the road. Suffice it to say, IQ is this IQ is your genetic potential for whatever your IQ is going to be minus your environment, period. There is no plus. There is nothing you can add. You can only achieve your potential. You cannot go beyond it. This country alone has spent trillions of dollars and has taken people with 150 IQs and employed them to try to figure out ways to elevate IQ. There is a massive industry that would make trillions of dollars if somebody would be able to figure out, talk about the incentive to elevate IQ. It would make you richer than richer than everything in the world. And no one has figured it out. That is because it is not possible. Think about it this way. If you have a Great Dane or if you have a person and you have one as a baby and one as a pup, and you severely malnourish them, neither one of them is going to reach their potential in height or IQ. But if you overfeed them, neither one of them is going to get taller or more intelligent than they are able to be. You're not going to get a Great Dane 12 feet tall because you feed him 12 times a day. 
he'll get great big as much as his genetics say the architecture of what he actually is says that he will be but no more so don't waste your dollars i guess the moral of that story is don't waste your dollars on thinking that you can gain more iq gain more intelligence than you have you can only access what you have the same way an eagle can have its wings tied to its sides and not learn to fly when it's trying to fledge and then can be unfettered and taught to spread its wings and glide and learn to fly you can access what is innately and intrinsically in you by treating yourself for the mean pathogens that are preventing you from reaching all of those IQ points. But don't you dare, don't you dare waste money on some, some other set of pills, some other set of the, I see pills for everything under the sun. And when I look to see how much these people are making, I am sickened. Why am I sickened? Because I know it is my people who are giving them money for that gullibility, that damn gullibility that we have. Pills that will grow your hair, pills that will make you more intelligent, pills that'll make your breasts bigger, pills that will do this and that, pills that will make your eyesight sharper. Stop it. None of that is going to work. Don't be gullible anymore. We are not gullible in service to white well-being. When that huckster comes into town, especially of that certain ilk, with those squeaking wheels, and he has that toady barking out all of the wonderful claims of this or that nostrum, you just tell them to go to hell. Not a penny for you. So let's see, we're going to get started on Jesse Lee Peterson. And then I'll read whatever, what other super chats we have. And uh, if somebody does find a, a way to uh, access IQ points that you already have that could uh, accompany or bolster the treating of mean pathogens in a person, let me know because I'll be very interested to see what it is. But as far as as far as treating those mean pathogens, I've watched people who I thought genuinely thought and sadly thought that they were dullards, that they really couldn't get anything, start treating their mean pathogens. This is going on for many years. And now they seem like they're sharp enough to get it. So if, if you start with people who seem like you feel bad for them, and you know what I'm talking about, and now they're at the point where you can have a regular conversation and they're getting it and they're with you. That is, that was something already inside of them. That was not something that you're not, they're not growing new something. They're not, none of that's happening. One of these days, I'll tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, one of these days we will recapture our destiny. And one of these days, what's going to happen in the medical field is medical students will lose the color in their faces as they grow queasy hearing the stories about how we used to cut people open for ailments, how we used to cut people open for surgeries. Because at that time in the future, we're going to take out the genetics of the person and we're going to fix the actual blueprints and then we're gonna put it back in. And the body, those DNA, that DNA code will make the changes in the body that we want. Everything we do today that we think is so brilliant, and which is, mo mo by modern terms, brilliant, is just window dressing. You're just screwing around with the window dressing after the house has already been built and after the house is already deteriorating. You need to be able to get at the architecture, which is the genetic code to make the real changes. And I guarantee you, one of these days, they'll, be, they'll have the vomit bag in the medical class when they hear about how they actually used to cut people open and pull an appendix out when all you you'll need to do at that point is take out a little bit of genetic code make the correction and the appendix starts working again so let's talk about jesse lee peterson you all know who jesse lee peterson is 
Um, if you have some thoughts on on Peterson, let me know. He appeared on PWR. Actually, I think it was uh, the previous show, but uh, appeared with us and uh, was seemed like a great guy, seemed like an interesting guy. A lot of people in the white positive sphere in general watch his material. They like the things he says. He's a big Trump supporter. He says that white people need to start defending themselves. He talks about how we are the people who are being harmed. Uh, and all true, fantastic. But I wanted to point this out because someone from our community shared this with me. They went on to uh, Jesse Lee's, one of his shows. I guess she's a regular, uh, regular watcher, listener. And Jesse Lee was talking about, he was getting, I think, a little cavalier with why aren't white people standing up? Why, where are the white men? Why aren't there any white males? Well, first of all, Jesse, you're looking at one. And you talked with you, you talked with Mark Collette, myself, and Patrick Slattery, uh, and you. So you were talking to three white men who are standing up for our people. Uh, you want to talk more? Have me on your show. You want to talk more? Come on over and uh, appear with another man, Jared George, white man, and myself on tap, and we can have a conversation about what's taking place in this country and across the West, all the way around the world. Happily, we'll have that conversation with you, good sir. But there's something that Jesse Lee needs to know because while he was getting a little cavalier with where are the white men? Why aren't they standing up? Why aren't they doing something about this? Are they, that, of course, implying that there aren't any white men left. This woman decided, white woman decided that she was going to say in the chat that, wait a second, Jesse, we have white men who are standing up for us, but when we stand up for our people, we are harangued by the anti-whites. We are dr dragged before these anti-white tribunals. We are socially lynched for this. We often lose our professions, not just our jobs, but your ability to get a job in the same profession because of anti-whiteism. So she tried to say this, trying to defend our men. God bless her for that. Thank you, my dear lady. And then this happened. And Jesse, you need to hear this. And folks, if you know Jesse, if any of you have his ear, and he'll listen to you, first of all, tell him to contact No White Guilt. Tell him to come on over to TAP and we'll have a conversation. We'll have a conversation about this. We'll have a conversation about Trump. We, you know, he loves Trump. I don't. Uh, we'll have a conversation about the Trump impeachment. You know, first Israeli president of the United States, President Blacks Built America Trump. We can have a conversation about America. We have a conversation about patriotism. We can have a conversation about race. Happily, we'll have that conversation with you, Jesse. One of his moderators, and get this, this is why I absolutely cherish the moderators that we have. Uh, and a big round of applause. Let's get some applause for our moderators. I know we have Laura with us. Um, let me get a drink. Ray on the other channel. And of course, Seaver. Is with us. I don't know if we have anybody else with us tonight, but a big thank you <clears throat> to all of you because this is what one of Jesse's moderators said. And this needs, if you like Jesse, for this to be brought to his attention. His moderator wrote back to a white woman, member of our community, serving white well being, wrote back to her after she wrote what I just said. Oh, and the moderator's name, by the way is Noah's underscore arc underscore, and then something else that she couldn't remember. So the beginning is Noah's underscore arc underscore. He or she wrote back, don't you realize that Jesse makes his paychecks off people like you? He wants you to think that someone else actually cares about white people. Jesse, I'm waiting for the message. If you wanna come on, tap and have a conversation about this and get rid of that moderator and uh, let us know how you really feel we will we will happily have you over here on tap and uh, we'll have a conversation as I say about that and about plenty of other things as well so let's see now we will pull up and if you all while we're listening to this fantastic song by Luke Mason uh, if you all have any other 
similar stories about Jesse you want to share, please do share them. And uh, in the chat, you could share them over the course of this song and, and when we get back. Uh, so we're going to take a short break. We're going to listen to this fantastic piece by Luke Mason. This is The Merchant of Shame, ladies and gentlemen. And it is an absolutely magnificent piece by Luke dedicated to Prometheus Rising, a book that will be a standalone but is now currently available in my book, Born Guilty, mythopoetic story about the creation of our people and it follows a narrative arc from the beginning of time and our creation by Prometheus himself all the way to the present, ladies and gentlemen, Luke Mason. Do not look and I is God evil. 
the book of darkness Cut him to a ray And still the council wasn't satisfied They demanded he cast off his powers And with her every word to look at blind And that, of course, is the amazing Luke Mason, Imminent Rain, Merchant of Shame, ladies and gentlemen. What a magnificent piece that is. And uh, so delighted that he is doing the work that he is doing for white well-being. Can everybody still hear me okay? I began talking over the end of the song, and I hope that did not screw things up over on this platform. I, I don't know, though, with any of these things that can be so incredibly delicate as the great poseidon knows who is here and i just saw him good evening to you my dear brother i see the great for null and of course eminent rain is here we just played his piece what a magnificent piece it is and he is working on the third uh, addition to that album as we speak Severus says the sound just fine thank thank you very much for saying that was i audible when i actually started talking before the end of the song could you hear me as well over the song uh for null is here another great musician i i just mentioned and over here on kofi we have the culinary bigot has super chatted three dollars and i wonder i wonder exactly what that kitchen looks like the culinary bigot raise the alarm he writes white rice smells tasty when it's steamed to perfection well uh, thank you for saying that. <laughs> thank you for adding that piece of information. I bet it does. Uh, okay, let's see. I think that's uh, I think that's what we have on. Yep, on these platforms over here. Everything's looking good over there. We'll have to look at entropy, and we also want to take a look at some of these wonderful comments that were made, and uh, I wanted to share with you all. And Apollo says, I heard you. Is everybody having a good time? A, a throat that feels like razor blades are streaking up and down the inside of it. Can't stop us from having, <laughs> from having fun and from doing the, the good work, the bio-spiritual work for our people, the things that really matter. So thank you all for being here with me and healing and growing and getting better. We've had so many spectacular testimonials uh, today and... It's just, a, it's such an amazing and heartwarming thing to hear some of the things, to read some of the things that have uh, been said. Leaving the, the relationship 
where uh, she was being abused. It was an abusive relationship. Many years decided, finally started going free, decided to get out of that environment. I think that was Katie uh, that we had a little earlier. Her name was uh, so many good things. Of course, Brant Danger standing up against the uh, union president, this I, I'm sure orbicular woman pontificating from atop all of the corpses of our white children uh, about how we need to guilt them more because they just quite haven't been guilted enough yet. We need to drag them down more so that we can have that equality. Because remember folks, where there is equality, you can never have excellence and eventually you can't even have competence. That's why all of these platforms run like they're assembled by orangutans or kangaroos or something like this because they practically are assembled by kangaroos. Uh, just a, a group of imbeciles running the show at every company now because they've been hiring on the basis of equality. We got to make sure that there aren't any white people here. Of course, for all of you, what does equality mean? Equality means your ass is gone. Equality means your ass isn't getting fired. Equality means your ass isn't getting the promotion you've worked for, even though you've obtained twice the amount of certificates and credentials as the non-white person it goes to. Equality means you're not getting into that university, no matter how high your GPA, no matter how many extracurricular activities you did for in the non-white communities, for the blacks over here and the Hispanics over there and the Jewish league over there. It doesn't matter how much you did. You're not getting into that university because you are a Westman. That's why. That's what equality means for us. Whenever you hear that word, you speak up where you are as to what it means for you, those you care about, your nieces and nephews, your sons and daughters, your mothers and fathers. You speak up to how it matters to us, how it is going to affect our community. Don't you dare sit in another conversation where people around you are talking about how great this system of preferential treatment is for non-whites without stepping up and saying how awful it is, how life-destroying it is for us. No university has an endless number of seats. No job has an endless number of positions. If there aren't an endless number of seats and there aren't an endless number of positions, that means people have to be excluded to increase the diversity. This is really simple stuff to understand once you explain it to people. There's only one group of people you can exclude. You can legally discriminate against. You can legally deny promotions. You can legally deny uh, a, a higher wage. And that's you and me, Western kind. So when they start talking about how great it is, you talk about how awful it is, how dreadful it is, how evil of a system it is. And then come back and share those testimonials with us. You And you make sure you always phrase it in this way. You make sure you always phrase it in the emotional way because the anti-whites are going to be talking about emotions. So you talk about emotions too. You say, what about that white teenage girl who has worked day and night so that she could have that 4.0 GPA and wants to get into this university? What about her who's not going to get into the university? What's that going to do for her? Now she has learned that this is how society is going to treat her when she works her ass off. What about that, what about that white teenage boy or that white teenage young man who has earned himself the law degree or whatever, engineering degree, and he has applied to hundreds of firms and he can't get a job anywhere because he's white, because they are hiring non-white applicants and promoting non-white applicants. What has that taught him about the world? It's not just going to be a, how is that going to affect him in the stillness of his, of his life? in those moments when he's alone and he feels like the world is against him. How will that tear down the walls of what he thought mattered in the world, of what he thought he could do to get ahead, of what he thought he could do to be a contributor to society? Where is he going to end up? Not someplace good. Make sure you paint the reality for these people. Make sure they know that if he learns that no matter how hard he works, he's going to be denied. He's not going to just be a success somewhere else automatically. He's not just going to, oh, he'll get a job at an engineering job someplace else. No, 
he's not he's going to end up in some job that he knows is below him below the work that he's invested below the talents that he's demonstrated and he's going to hate his life and he's going to end up on a downward spiral into the drugs that we're seeing skyrocketing records of for our people into the white flight of suicide you make sure those people know exactly what happens when they start talking about the joys of diversity and the joys of diversifying the workforce. And every quarter, each of these big companies are talking about how they're going to hire more and they're going to make it more diverse and more diverse. They're not making new jobs. They're not making new seats. They're getting rid of you. All right. Let's talk about and we'll let's talk about these comments and then we'll read these super chats and we will get on to Noel Ig. How do you pronounce this guy's name? Ignatyev? Noel Ignatyev? I'm gonna have to pull him up while we are while we are live because I didn't get it ready. I didn't have time ahead of time. But I'm guessing that he comes from a country called Russia but he's not Russian. Let's see about these comments. Traversing the Divide wrote, thank you for uh, addressing some of the ways you handle anti-white sentiment online and IRL. As someone that is relatively new to the white positive sphere, it is much appreciated. Well, thank you very much, Traversing the Divide, for getting back to me, letting me know that you appreciate the good work that we are doing here for white well-being and learning from it, growing from it. I'd like to hear more about the uh, conversations you have. You're going free and those you help to go free. So thank you very much. Okay, this guy wrote me with the proper way to read his name and I don't remember. I'm gonna take a stab, I think. It, he writes it as capital B, lowercase b, M space, ADD pound sign 11. And I think he told me it, it's some that's read something like B flat minor and sharp 11 or something like that. I'm probably wrong, but that's okay. I'm sorry if I'm, I got it off. I, I gave it my best shot. So he writes, I was commenting on an article earlier and began conversing with another commenter. And it turns out they were white positive and going free as well. It was really cool and felt good to encounter a fellow free goer on a completely different platform. Well, thank you so much, BBM, for sharing that with us. And uh, all of you, if you encounter others who are going free, if you're out there, and, and thank you also for uh, sharing going free, sharing white well-being with others on other platforms and other threads and other live feeds. And folks, if you're out there, you're doing that and you have a great conversation, let us know. If you're out there and doing it and you come across others who are, I mean, what a spectacular thing. He's out there trying to help someone go free and then finds out that that person's going free. Already a member of this community. That is magnificent. That means we are growing. We had the comment last week of somebody saying that uh, they, they, they knew me and uh, we're, we're delighted. Uh, this was a delightful meeting that these two people had. So we are absolutely a rapidly growing community that has staying power, not a fad. Nothing here is just a fad that's going to go away in six months to two years. It is here forever. Austin 316 writes, I'm honored to see Jason of No White Guilt reading aloud my comment from a past video when I didn't even send him any money. <laughs> Thank you, brother. No, brother, you know that you do not have to send a cent. You can, if you are, your contribution is X, then by God, we love you and embrace you for doing X. Uh, you don't have to be, your name is going to go in that hall of heroes with the other folks who are working class and are able to contribute a cent or able to contribute a uh, hundred or would we have 800 from uh, Blossom? Thank you, that, that one super chat. Absolutely princely, magnanimous, just munificent, spectacular sum. Uh, your, your name is going to go into that hall of heroes. We will be the folks 
who are remembered. Every little bit counts. This is a tug of war. It's a tug of war. We are the molecules of, to use another metaphor, uh, of, of H2O that compose this great wave coming for the shore. That the anti-whites right now, they're wondering, where did the ocean go? Why has the ocean retreated from the beach? Why has it retreated from the shoreline? And like idiots, they're walking out, finding the neat shells, wondering where the ocean went. It's coming. So thank you very much for that, Austin. Rock Dad, like you very much, brother, writing, Jason, you have an answer to every roadblock the anti-whites put in front of us. Thank you for your service to white well-being. God bless. Well, God bless you, Rock Dad. I don't have uh, an answer to everything but I will get the answer to everything. That's absolutely. And either it'll be something I think up or one, something you all think up. And I will, if it works, I will immediately adopt it for white well-being, and we will promulgate it to the entire body of our people. So thank you very much for that rock dad. Grand celestial knight, great name, Jason. I know how you touched upon the equivalence fallacy. Weapons like these, this is from last week, folks. Weapons like these are used to dismiss the harm that is being done to our people. It is is basically telling us to suck it up. Like we are not experiencing any true woes within our community. In these anti-whites minds, they believe that we never experience the same pain or harm which non-whites experience. No, in fact, ours is infinitely worse. What, what harm does a non-white person suffer in the modern West, except being wealthier, even the poor non-whites, even the poor non-whites in a Western country are infinitely wealthier than their people before contact with Western civilization. They are wealthier than the kings of Western civilization just a few hundred years ago. What is so hard? And you know what else? While white people sit around and, and, and just roll their hands cup their hands in pain and, and pull at their garments wondering, what, what can we just do for the non-whites? What can we do to elevate the IQ of this or that group of non-whites? There isn't a single non-white group saying, what can we do to make white people, to bring white people up to the level of us in whatever ability that we have that's better than white people? Not a single one of them. Not a single one. Rest assured, one of the most obvious salient places is the 100 meter dash. Now I know we have this, I was very fast, I wasn't as fast as the Olympic sprinters. And I know we have, there's this, there's this young white man, 19 or whatever he is, that almost set the world record. But generally speaking, when it comes to sprinters, this is going to be black athletes. How many black people do you think are concerning themselves with increasing the foot speed of white people. Doesn't that sound dumb as all hell? You know not a single one. How many, when you look at the NFL and you see how many black athletes are on the field, or now you look at uh, soccer called football in the rest of the world, and you see increasing in Europe, increasingly non-white athletes, how many, non, how many non-white people do you think, whether they're anti-white or not, are wondering what can we do really to make white people better soccer players so that they won't be put out of a job by non-white soccer players? None, not one. So what you have across the West is preferential treatment and special privileges at every stage of life for non-white people that are, and when you have a preferential treatment or special privilege, ladies and gentlemen, that by, just ipso facto on its face can only exist if someone else is not getting the preferential treatment. Does this make sense? I mean, we could be building rockets right now, but we have to talk about this. So if somebody's getting preferential treatment, that means someone else isn't. And what group can you deny that to? Yeah, Western kind. So yeah, this, this idea that Grand Celestial Knight is mentioning here, that somehow whites haven't suffered. Uh, we're suffering the worst of all groups on planet Earth because we are being white erased. There is nothing worse than that. 
We are being erased from our own civilizations. Not only materially, but biologically. No crime is worse than that. No being followed around a, a, a store by a clerk because you you're wearing a hoodie and you look like you're going to shoplift. N that is nowhere close to the pain that we suffer being erased. These jackasses, they make me absolutely sick with their lies. You see, folks, this is all their anti-white narrative. It has nothing to do with reality. In their anti-white narrative, everything is good for white people. In the anti-white narrative, white people are sitting atop a, a, a giant steed made up of non-white laborers. It is insane. It has nothing to do with reality. That's why they need to shut me up. Because they know when they teach you that garbage and then you go out in society and you say, well, wait a second. I keep seeing all of these. I keep having to go to these classes at work that tell me how evil I am. And yet the, the TV tells me how I have it good in everything in the world my entire life. I've got all of these be pref preferential treatment. I, I'm on top of the world. Got all these benefits. I got a knapsack because I'm white. All of these goodies that come to me. But then I go to work and I had to take this, this job that uh, I didn't actually work for that was well below what I, des what I had worked for because they were hiring, diversity hiring. And now I can't get promoted because they're diversity hiring. And now I have to go to these classes that tell me I'm evil because I'm white. So there's some cognitive dissonance here. And I can't go to that part of town where everybody's supposedly better and morally superior and dance better than me. And uh, they're all, I can't go to that part of town because they'll kill me there. And the, the crime rates are higher there. And it's a little bit of cognitive dissonance there. So the anti-whites know that if you then hear from somebody like me, that you're going to say, you know what? I'm not going to listen to the anti-whites anymore. I'm going to go listen to this no white guilt guy instead. That's why they got to shut you. That's why they got to shut people like me down. Grand Celtic Knight finishes by writing, it's like they are justifying harm to us. This is sickening. Keep doing the good work for our people, Jason. You are truly a righteous man. And so are you, Grand Celestial Knight. So are you. God bless you for being disgusted by this. It means that there's something working properly inside of you that isn't working right. And all the white people that just go, hmm, when they see this happening. They need to be metaphorically, uh, uh, linguistically slapped across the face and be aided to go free. So thank you very much. KD writing, do you... Do you think your country won? These are in quotes. Quote, do you think your country won? Close quote. This is something I said the other week when I was fired up. He writes, that chilled me to the bone. May God heal and restore our wonderful people and our beautiful civilization. If you haven't read the new edition of Go Free Yet, it's fantastic. He writes in all capital letters, four exclamation points. As soon as I finished it, I opened it back up to page one to read it again. And I'm getting even more out of it the second time through. God bless you for that testimony, KD. That is a wonderful thing to write. There are people that are going to hear this, me read what you said, and they're going to see what you wrote, and they are going to go free because of it. Know that, my dear friend. Thank you very much for that. We have Jack B. writing here. It is a seemingly small yet very important uh, for normal white people to both not use anti-white terminologies such as racist, white supremacist, people of color, and skin color, and correct other people who use such terminology. Some examples of this are you always put the word racist in quotations, thus delegitimizing the term. Also, whenever you maybe, I guess, hear POC, you correct or read POC, P-O-C, you, you correct them, I guess, but hear them, you correct them by saying non-white, not P-O-C. Last but not least, correct people by, say, by saying race, not skin color. 
These are some small but very important things you can do for the white positivity cause. Amen, Jack B. All of that brilliantly written. That is exactly what we are sharing here to do. Do not let anti-whites or someone in your life reduce our peoplehood to a color. For God's sakes, how insulting is that? Man up, woman up, have some dignity. We are not just a color. The term white is ancillary to Western kind, to Westmen. That's what we use here. We only use the, the word white as an ancillary supportive term because so many people know it. But you don't ever let it get used as a color, reducing our peoplehood to nothing more than a color. Kelby writes that story, and thank you very much for that, Jack. Kelby writes that story of the hoppy monster. That's what I was talking about last week about me saving this rabbit. Kelby writes that story of the hoppy monster laughing my whole damn head off. Just the thought of Jason streaking off after the damn crows. <laughs> Finger wagging, good Lord, indeed. It, it, it's, out, it's crazy, but it indeed happened, and I have the picture to prove it. The hoppy monster, maybe I'll briefly show you all if I still have the hoppy monster up here on the platform and so you can get a, a good look at him. To remember, that was the hoppy monster, if you can see him. And maybe I'll tell the story again one of these days if you weren't around to hear it. I think it was last week we talked about that little bugger. And let's see. Finally, we have Anonymous writing. Anonymous writes, you have solved a couple major problems in my life. One, your work showed me the best and smartest way to fight for white well-being. And two, your choice to take a stand for all content creators in the white positive sphere has solved another major problem I was dealing with, support shaming. I am so grateful that you took an interest in helping creators like me to rebuild our culture. You are a shining example of what a white man can be. I'm really honored to be a part of your work and take part in all of this Promethean greatness which emanates from everything you do. Thanks for believing in me and giving me this opportunity to use my gifts for white well-being. Well, thank you. You are a shining example of what it means to be a white man. All of you out there, shining examples of what it means to exhibit this Promethean courage in this age, this epoch of darkness. We will be the light bearers, the torch carrier carriers in this dark age. And we will lead our people through that needle's eye, the ones who are worthy. And we will make a people out of this deracinated race, a new people that will be brighter, healthier, better than we have ever been. A people who will be worthy of the heritage that was passed down to us. A people that will take us to the stars and beyond. So thank you so much, all of you, all of those great comments, everybody participating. Let me check the investments and we will get to Noel Ignatyev and the swine that he is. Looks like on YouTube, we have Eminent Rain, super chatting, super chatting $9.99. And ladies and gentlemen, Eminent Rain is Luke Mason, the creator of the song we just played. Please, his links are up. Uh, on my uh, on my website, if you go onto nowhitegilt.org, you scroll down, you will find when we premiered Eminent Rain's piece, and under the uh, there will be two posts there, one in video, one in audio. In the post that is audio, you will see his links to I think Cash, I think Ka Kofi, and Bandcamp, uh, and uh, you can give him a financial pat on the back. But if you are too poor to do that, you can uh, give him some pat on the back right now. Tell him how much you liked his music, how much you'd love to see more. Even if it's not your kind of music, you're delighted that he and others like him are doing this kind of work for white well-being. Let's support each other. I am, as I said, when it comes to all of the artists, certainly all the ones that appear in service to white well-being on my channel are all going to have a financial pat on the back from me as often as I can make it happen. I haven't gotten to all of them yet, but I will get to all of them. 
with funds out of my day job. So uh, follow my lead. I will lead by example. They're getting my dollars. Uh, they're not going to be made rich by us, but they will know that you care and you love them for the work they're doing. Imminent Rain, super chatting $9.99, writing, Jeff Winston is a great singer. Also traversing the divides, music is fantastic. Really? Okay. Whack is flourishing. Promethean hails. Well, that is fantastic. Thank you so much. I will have to hear, I have not heard any of tra Traversing the Divides music yet. Or, I, or if I did, I didn't know that it was uh, his or her music. So I'm interested to check that out. If you like it, then it must be good. Uh, and I, I actually did, believe it or not, heard Jeff sing a very silly song. It was sent to me by a, a viewer serving white well-being told me to uh, sit me a link and said, have a listen to this. And something like it was called Dang Do something or other. It was hilarious, but he had a great voice. It's true. So thank you very much, Eminent Rain. Uh, Jeff uh, Winston, of course, White Art Collective folks. Uh, on Saturdays, they're playing music from uh, some of the best in uh, service to white well-being. It's magnificent stuff. You can go over there and check that out. Please do and make sure to support the good work that uh, Jeff and uh, Mama from uh, Mama in the Pepe's is doing over there. And I, I don't know if they, if they have some other co-hosts over there, maybe they do. So um, let's continue to grow this community as best we can. Now, it doesn't have to just be money. If you have some other skill or talent you can provide, then jump right in. Uh, and if you have the time to do so, jump right in, offer your help, and otherwise, let's create this, let's create this, you know, those, where you see those baskets or the material that they, the way they weave the Kevlar together for vests, if you've ever seen that. It is made infinitely stronger by the way all of those threads come together. That is how we will be. We, and when the anti-white strike us with the hammer that they strike from down from above, we will be resilient because we are woven together this way. There won't be something glass here that can shatter. No leader standing in the center that hammer comes down on his head and everything is blown to pieces. This is more like Kevlar stitched together by great and creative people. Jeff Winston, Eminent Rain, Poseidon, Jared George, Mark Collette, all the rest, all of you sewn together and uh, they can bring that hammer down and it's just gonna bounce right back in their faces. So thank you very much, Pamela. Back again, my dear lady, $9.99. Jason, my husband is an engineer. Uh, they are hired as individual independent contractors. The engineer types are living in the Atlas Shrug storyline every day. Very interesting. Okay. Well, thank you very much for that info and for uh, the kind super chat. So uh, if you are a young man or woman and you're interested in engineering, uh, you might have an opportunity there to be an independent contractor. So look into that. JK160, super chatting $10. Love the rock. Imminent Rain needs a cool metal t-shirt. Yes, he does. That's fantastic. Thank you very much for that kind super chat. Good sir. And for those good words for Imminent Rain. Okay, uh, Spencer's thoughts. Super chatting again on YouTube, $13.99. In my previous comment, I meant more of an IRL challenge. Commenting on someone's stream is too easy. I can do five of those in as many minutes. I want something that will give us stories. Well, all right. Spencer's thoughts are saying, folks, and you're going to have an opportunity coming up these holidays if you're in the States, certainly, but everywhere for Christmas. You have Thanksgiving in the States and uh, perhaps in some of the other countries. If you want to chime in, you might have some other holidays that are commensurate to our Thanksgiving. Uh, if you have those opportunities with friends or family and it's an environment that you can take it to whatever level, take it to whatever level. Try to help those people go free. Say what you can, bring us back a story about the interaction. Of course, you know your family, you know that environment. Don't give, you know, don't goad your mother, mother-in-law into an actual heart attack. Just make her say she's going to give up, have a heart attack. <laughs> be good, but uh, otherwise be firm. So thank you very much. Uh, Spencer's thoughts again, 13 Canadian dollars and 99 cents. 
Okay, we got Dragon Lord. I think we got this Spencer Thoughts. We got Mrs. Horse here. Yes, indeed. Goys of Summer. So many great folks. Jason, Spencer's Thoughts again. There's Pamela. Pamela, I don't know if I got this one, Pamela. Pamela, $2.99. Thank you so much for that kind super chat and writing for the coffee and with some hearts. Thank you. I always need more coffee, especially on these days when somebody has placed razor blades in my throat. So thank you very much for that, Pamela. Uh, Daniel, super chatting $10 over here on Entropy. Thank you very much. And folks, you can watch the stream on Entropy. This is a group of people who has uh, maintained their word and has been there for us thus far, no complaints. Uh, if you can write them a, uh, a thank you for their service to the good work that we're doing here, helping us to help you see, w watch these streams, receive this material, reach out to them, let them know that you are grateful for the work they are doing. And remember that when you super chat over here on Entropy, they get a portion, this is how they pay their bills. They're not going to get rich. They know they're not going to get rich. They know they are supporting free speech for people that are considered heretics by the anti-whites. So they are doing it on principle, the principle of free speech, and God bless them for that. And uh, we support them for that. So thank you very much, Daniel, for super chatting over here on Entropy. And if I could, I will say a big thank you to uh, Rachel, Rachel and team over at Entropy for the hard work that they're doing and especially the hard work that they did to help Jared and I build their website, their Entropy software right into our website. That was a tremendous job that they did. A big thank you to them. Daniel, super chatting $10 and writing, be ready, Western Brothers, buy some silver. Well, my friend, I am using it at the moment. Not literally this moment, of course, but Let's see. We got, Ka yes, it was Katie. The name was right. Okay. And Ryan, okay. I believe that, I don't think I've missed anybody from YouTube or Entropy now. Let me move back up and uh, ban it at $1.99. Uh, I don't know if I should use that word. White people who behave like non-white people. Bannett writes that such people disgust me on a fundamental level. Yeah, there's something absolutely inherently disgusting about someone who is taking on, attempting to take on the bio-spiritual manifestation of another group. There's something that is, it, it feels to a healthy person like something akin to seeing maggots writhe in, in meat. I mean, it's in putrefying meat. There, there's something so inherently disgusting and wrong about it uh, that it, it really elicits a, a sickening response in healthy people. Uh, so I, uh, I feel, I, I used to feel the same way when these phenomenon, when I was in junior high school, I write about it in Crucible and it is in Born Guilty where I had never seen a person, a white person, imitating a non-white person before in, in, every, in, in every outward expression, uh, speech patterns, particular words, clothing, uh, locomotion, everything. I'd never seen that before, and, I, and I, I thought it was something very uh, peculiar, and so did everyone else, as a matter of fact. Uh, so $1.99, thank you so much for that uh, super chat and your sharing of your disgust with such people. <laughs> and I think that's everybody on YouTube and Entropy. If I have missed anybody on YouTube, will you please tag either me or Laurel uh, or Seaver and let us know that I did not read your super chat and I will make sure to get to it if it occurred on YouTube or Entropy because I don't see any more here and I will check the other platforms uh, in uh, just a moment. 
I want to see what you all are saying and see if I've missed any of comments or questions tagging me. We're getting ready to wrap this up. We're going to talk about Noel the vermin, the rodent. He looked like, uh, I'm, I'm sure much to his chagrin, every time he looked in the mirror, he saw a rat staring back. And I'm sure he, he didn't like that. Jay Hart writes, thank you, Jason. No white gill. Well, thank you, my dear friend. Thank you for being here. And people, I see people making the throw up face for seeing whites that. Uh... For seeing whites that imitate the bio spirit of other peoples. And why do we see this? Well, we see this in. I'll just say because. I'll just say because I, I won't I, I won't qualify it. We see this because there is no such thing as white privilege. There is no such thing as a bonus to being a white person in Western civilization today. We, what we do see instead is white people doing their best to pretend to be non-white people. Why is that? Because there's a benefit to being that. Why is that? Because they have been taught to hate themselves as white people and they will do anything they can to esca escape it. That is why. Non-white people are taught that they are special, that they are unique, that their cultures are special and unique. And we are said, told all of our lives that our culture, that our peoplehood, that our expressions is common, is pedestrian, is boring. Now, even if they didn't outright say in school and in movies and on television that white people, you're boring, but they do, don't they? They say, oh, you're, you're vanilla. And what's vanilla meant to mean? It's, it's meant that it's boring, it's plain, it's uninteresting, you don't have a culture. They say that. But even if they didn't say that, to say that non-white people and their cultures are special and unique is to ipso facto on its face say that white people are not special and unique. Again, this isn't rocket science. The moment they say they're special, they're unique, you can only be special and unique as opposed to something that is not special and unique. And that is what our babies are being taught. And dumb white parents are allowing it to happen. So when white people are being told, as we were talking about earlier, that in another comment, that white people are said to not suffer as much as non-white people. Bullshit. I apologize for my language. It is infuriating to hear this anti-white lie, this anti-white narrative, as opposed to reality. That in fact, we are being told that we are common, unimportant, and uninteresting as a people. And if we are common, unimportant, and uninteresting as a people, that means that you and that little white girl there and that little white boy there are common, unimportant, and uninteresting as individuals. That is why they decide, mommy, I don't want to be white. Why do I have to be white my whole life? And then they go and they pretend to be some other race and they go declare war on our people so that they can get away from all that is common, unimportant, uninteresting, and evil. That is what's happening to us. Non-white people aren't suffering as people's one jot. We are absolutely being persecuted. The worst persecution the world has ever seen right now today because there has never been a time in history when a people at birth are named all the things you see seared into that white baby on my book. That has never happened in history. And then they are kept this way for the totality of their lives. And that you have entities the size of the media, the size of the governments they have today, the ability to reach into every single home and therefore into every single mind and tell them every single day that they are an evil people and they should cease to exist because of it. And that's the bastard we're going to talk about next. We had another super chat come in, $4.99 from Bannett again. Thank you, my dear friend. Would you agree that there is no political solution to the problems facing us as a people? Seems to me there is only a spiritual answer. 
there is no political solution. And we talk about this a lot in the service to white well-being. There's no political solution and there's no violent solution. There is the psychological solution. Hold on one second. There is the, the phone is blowing up. There is a psychological solution and a communal faith rebuilding of the community solution. That is all there is. The love for our people, the recreation of who and what we are, addressing the cycle, all that psychologically, spiritually, emotionally, physically ails us. Coming together with this curative contagion, spreading that to our brothers and sisters, that is the only route. Right now, it's not visible. And, and most of the time, Bannon, and I, I'm not ascribing this to you, but most of the time when somebody says there's only a spiritual answer, they're talking about a particular religion. No, there is no religious answer to this. If that is your position, if, if you want to talk about spirituality, spirituality in general, then yes, but there is no religious answer to this. If, if we as a people head down a particular denomination of Christianity or Catholicism or whatever, those are paths that are so well-worn, game hunters can sit and pick us off all day long. They have been defeated again and again and again. We are not going down that path again. There is spirituality to this, and it is the bio spirit that is inside of us. It is the reason why we can look at pagan temples and look at Christian temples and look at Catholic, uh, Catholic temples and look at Mormon temples and feel that singing of our spirit with those creations. The reason why is that was our bio spiritual creation writ upon the real world. We need to get away from all of this quibbling over this particular view or that particular view, or you've got to be, you know, I'm hearing a lot of, you got to be Catholic from cer certain folks now. You've, you've got to be, you've got to be Catholic. You've got to be Christian. You've got to be pagan. You've got to be atheist. You've got to be all of it and none of it. As long as you're serving the bio spirit that is inside of Western kind, that is what matters. Anybody seeking to divide us into any of these other old uh, organizational structures, organizational entities is a fool or they're lying to you or they're leading you to perdition either way. So there's absolutely a spiritual element and embraces all of our spiritualities uh, that we have manifested on this world that has even come about in something that we would call uh, atheism when we turn to... Uh, not the atheists. Now, mind you, when we talk about atheists, 99% of them, I'm talking about the term just generically, 99% of them end up going anti-white. You know who those are. But I'm talking about just the belief or agnostic belief that you don't know a creator or we couldn't know a creator or there couldn't be a creator, but nonetheless are people who turn to uh, themselves, the spirituality inside themselves, and nonetheless come into contact with that and do great works because of it. They are short-sighted. They're myopic when they turn away from, and they do it mostly out of childishness. They turn away from what is truly magical inside of us because no God has ever stood before them or their mother died. And so therefore there can be no God or their father died. And so therefore there can be no God. It's always some sort of childish, you know, there, there's no, when I've talked to these people, I, when they're not just rapidly anti-white and they want to destroy all things Christian, uh, it comes down to some tragedy or something of this nature. And therefore they turned away from anything that could be magical. There is, there are so many questions that we can't answer. And the only word left for them is magic until we can disembroil those those magics. So let's get to let's get to talking about uh, we have. Ooh, I do want to mention. There's a couple more. I want I want to mention how to handle. Let's do this really quickly. How to handle rumors, allegations, suspicions internal discord. The one thing the anti-whites do very well is they sow discord into our organizational entities, into our communities. There are uh, so many ways to do this. We don't have time. I've got to be leaving soon for an IRL. Uh, so suffice it to say that if there's a skill that you can say these bastards are adroit at, it is sowing discord. 
How do they do it? Well, we can tie it right to what I was just talking about. They'll come in and say, well, everybody's got to be, or, or Catholicism is the only way they'll say, or uh, this form of Protestantism is the only way, or uh, this form of, of paganism, because we have shards of this and it came before that, then this is the only way. It is all just an effort to divide, to sow discord. We are going to unite in service to white well-being to our biospirit. Everything else we are going to respect. We are going to respect our differences on all of these other issues. We're going to come together on that which matters, which is the only thing that gave us life, our bio spirit. Arguing over anything else is like two soldiers in the Alamo. I've said it before, arguing about what the future economy of Texas is going to look like as Santa Ana is storming in. It is absolutely inane especially now that you realize that Texas is going to be uh, predominantly non-white and voting Democrat in the very near future. So how dumb, how even worse would that have been for those two white soldiers to be arguing in the Alamo about what the economy of Texas is going to look like at some point in the future when even further in the future, the damn state is going to be anti-white and non-white. It is asinine. Anyone seeking to divide us out of malice or stupidity. You don't have to know which it is. That's the beauty of this when it comes to protecting this community. And we are going to become absolutely intransigent, stalwart asses when it comes to anyone who is trying to divide us. Anyone, here's the moral. If it serves white well-being, it's good. If it harms white well-being, it's bad. It's that simple. If it serves white well-being, it's good. This is our more highest moral. If it harms white well-being, it's bad. Dividing us into the sectarianism is obviously going to be bad because it will weaken us, weaken us into all of these separate little belief systems could, could do nothing but make us easy victims for the anti-whites. So if you haven't heard them before, they'll be coming. Rumors allegations, suspicions about this person or that person or this group or that group. Here's how you handle it. You handle it with the antiseptic of sunshine. That is how you handle the rumors, the discord. This stuff is like black mold. It can only grow in the dark. That's where it takes its root. That's where it poisons the organism. So here's where it starts. When someone says something to you that about, I think this about that or that about this, and it in some way is going to adversely affect white well being, you say to them, Are you being anti white? What's your motive here? Because this sounds anti white. And if it's, if we're going down an anti white road, then it has to stop. Now, somebody might come to you, somebody might be genuine, and they might say, Well, I really think that this particular content creator is kind of going astray with this view. And this is like a reason thing they're coming to you with. And I think ultimately by going this direction, here's my logic that that's going to be detrimental to white well-being. In that scenario, you can examine it and say, well, yeah, maybe no, maybe yes or whatever. And, and there can be a conversation. But if somebody comes to you and says, I think that thus and such is really X, Y, Z. And it's one thing after the other then you know you're dealing with somebody that is either a dumbass or maliciously acting on behalf of anti-whites or maliciously acting because they are an anti-white. And you will immediately say, stop being so anti-white. And when people are spreading such things, when you know someone who talks that way, go ahead and feel free to come to me. And if you can't get a hold of me, reach out to Jared George. Let us know about who is spreading discord, who is trying to stir up the environment so that they get people at odds with each other, so that they get people putting these other things before white well-being. Nothing comes before white well-being. Nothing. Nothing. If, we, if I have to jump into the, the furnace hole to plug it up so that we can preserve white well-being, I'm jumping into that furnace hole. Nothing comes before white well-being. So we pour the light of day on this. And when we find out that someone is in our midst, 
out of malice or stupidity. They're causing disruption. They're trying to drive wedges into the good work that we are doing for white well-being, which is a work of redemption, a work of love. You know what this looks like. There's no mistaking it. If someone's coming in and driving a wedge, they're trying to cause problems, we will absolutely throw that person from this community with as much force as we can muster. We will out them as the problem that they are. We will talk about them as the problem that they are, and they will be done. They will be ostracized. No one will be allowed to remain in service to white well-being that puts anything ahead of white well-being. No one will be allowed to remain who is going to push for sectarianism, who is going to put anything ahead of, the, of our white babies, of us getting between those anti-white bullets and, and the, the anti-white firing and our babies that the bullets are directed for. Every such person will be ostracized publicly. You're not gonna be allowed to just quietly disappear. So know that anti-white agents, know that you will be publicly ostracized. And now the entire community knows this is how we handle this sort of internal discord. I'm not putting up with any of this garbage. If you, it, there are people out in this world that have personal issues. They want to, there there's, if you don't know what the tall poppy syndrome is, look it up. I have suffered from people feeling the tall poppy syndrome too many times in my life. And it's not going to happen in the service to white well-being. It's, it's happened to me in education. It's happened to me in work. It's happened to me in sports. It's not going to happen to any of us in the service to white well-being. So if you're a great poet and there's another poet out there that's great also, and you're feeling a little jealous, you better write better poetry or more poetry. Don't go around and start telling people that that poet is xyz on the side and when you have no proof of that you're just wanting to pull that person down we're not going to have it in this community all that matters that very first thing is service to white well-being service to that bio spirit inside of ourselves, and then everything else all of our other virtues are still in place but underneath of that does that make sense if anybody has any questions ask now and while i am on that topic I want to speak to our artists out there. This is very important. I want to speak to our artists. If you're an artist watching this and you know some artists out there who didn't hear this, share it with them. Maybe tell them to come and watch at this hour minute mark. Tell them to come and watch. If you are going to be making content to serve white well-being, all of your content must comport with white well-being that, that is submitted. And don't do don't like give us some submission that comports with white well-being and then go over here and and make you know rape pictures or something asinine because that's exactly the kind of thing that the anti-whites would do to demonize yours truly and all the good work that we're doing for white well-being so if you are going to make art to serve white well-being you make sure that the things that you contribute, the things that you give to me, comport with white well-being, that none of it is going to contradict the good work that we are doing. Now, it might seem on its face, like, oh, that's obvious. But I know we are all individuals. I know we all want to have our own little stamp on things. I know we are all coming from other places in the world. I know we are still in the process of being redeemed. I understand that this is a reality. And so I have to say, I don't want to see some, I don't want to find some hidden verbiage or hidden imagery in some piece of art that you submit and then ends up on my channel and ends up on the, uh, the afterparty.tv that an anti-white can then go and find and say, oh my God, look at this, what it says here. This is obviously what no white guilt is all about. This is obviously what serving white well-being is all about. This hidden image in this one artist's and you know that the entire white gullible masses hearing that come from some official source, like we're going to talk about this official bastard uh, source in a moment, that they'll believe it because it will fit with their anti-white narrative. 
So I cannot have anything sewn in there that is going to, to uh, that somehow misses the review process that is going to end up popping up and anti-whites will say, well, look here, I won't, there won't be any deleting it quick enough off of my, uh, my site and the website or my channel. There won't be any uh, denouncing the artist quickly enough or, or, or enough period for it to matter. They will just be able to take the story. They'll be able to write it up on 2000 different websites in 2000 different newspapers. And then whenever anybody searches for white well-being, they'll find out that, oh, well, this, this hidden uh, child murder art uh, symbol or whatever was stuck into some poem or song or video or whatever it was. So none of that is permitted and don't do it. Don't do it. I will be angry enough to find you. You are not, no one. I just said I would sacrifice my life for white well-being. If there was the hole in a furnace that needed to be filled so that white well-being could continue, I would fill that with my body. I am not going to allow some person who's bringing some baggage from behind them to damage this. No way. I have behaved in my life. I have, I have tried to act in all ways to comport myself so that my self, just me, Jason, Kuna, that it would not be, that this person would not be a detriment to this great work. So I'm not going to allow anybody else. If I'm willing to sacrifice this flesh, you sneak something on my, the work I'm doing and ruin it. I will say no more. You got the picture. So having said, and if you, if you find this stuff or uh, you, you submit something and then you find this message, come to me and say, my God, I submitted something. And then I found out you said this message uh, uh, earlier and please pull it down quickly before anybody knows because I, I did put something in there that was really asinine and would make, would really harm the work you're doing. I'm not, I don't care, I don't care at all. You think you're gonna hurt me? I don't give a shit. Apologize for my language, this really upsets me. I don't care if it's just me, it's not me, it's the, all of our people that are going to be harmed by a person doing such a thing. So if you come to me and you say, I'm sorry, let's please take care of this, then we'll take care of it. And uh, I will honor you and respect you for that. If you find something like this somewhere, come to me and let me know so that we can take care of it before the anti-whites do. Because rest assured, they're going to be, I could easily see, and all of you could see it, the anti-whites are going to say, oh, this guy is building a community. He's part of a community and bringing people in. And, and so I got a great plan and we got tons of money to hire people. We'll hire eight guys to be a musician and we'll hire four guys to be writers and we'll hire some people to be painters. And all of those people will come together as one name. And then that multi-talented person will show up and provide and provide and provide. And there's going to be Play the audio backwards and it says X, Y, Z or whatever. Look in the water on the picture on the video. And if you darken it to whatever level, it, you'll see this, et cetera. You could easily see the anti-whites doing that. So I'm, I don't want to have to deal with it. I got to deal with it from the anti-white agent provocateurs. I got to watch out for it there. I don't want to have others that I have to watch out for it because it's something that they feel still attached to or something that's meaningful for them or whatever. So we'll read the super chats. If there are any questions about this or suggestions, we will uh, take a look at them and then we're going to finish up with Noel Ignatyev. We have over here on the familiar alternative, Edgar Allen, great participant in the community. Thank you so much for being here. $10. Uh, 
Uh, gadgets deteriorate, gold maintains, and our people create. The choice is so obvious that it seems like no more of a choice than breathing. Amen to that. Edgar Allan, very well written, talking about how the, the void in your life is only going to be filled when you fill it with service to the biosphere, not with gadgets, not with, not with all of these other things. Well said. Thank you, my dear friend. Exo, super chatting $10 on the familiar alternative, writing entropy sign in with Google says currently unavailable for me. So I'll use stream. I'll use a, a familiar alternative to say hello to all you, the community make me proud daily. Amen to you. Thank you so much for super chatting during the stream today. $10 and we will find out why uh, did you use the link that is in for the stream labs that is in the description or did you use a different one because we have different links for um, in the description for entropy and you have to use the one that is in the description of the current live stream for it to work so thank you very much, though, for that kind super chat of ten dollars. Uh, Raymond, did I? I didn't read this one. Five dollars. We're not going anywhere, brother. We're here for the long term. Thank you for your work and inspiration for our people. Hail victory! Hail victory indeed, Raymond. Thank you and your lovely wife for being here all the time. Great participants in this community, always contributing. And folks, they have a big family. Every dollar they give, make no mistake, is going to protect that family. So we will check these other. Oh, and I see another star has shown up. Philosophicat is with us. Yes, indeed. We just played her great skit with Jared George as a premiere, really just spotlighting it the other day and on No White Guilt and then uh, streamed it to all the other platforms. It was magnificently done. A stupendous performance by Philosophic Hat and Jared George. They do a great job, very proud of them. I'm very proud of them. Over here on Cash App, we have a glitch happening on the screen, but we will resolve it and get a drink. On Kofi, Billahora. Great to see you, good friend. Nine dollars over here on Kofi as I take a drink of coffee. Writing, it's good that you address that rat faced filth, anti white Noel Ignatyev of the Usurper tribe. He openly called for, quote, white genocide, but never had to fear for his professor's tenure in the majority white United States. It's a despicable outrage. That is exactly what he called for. May he rot in hell. May he rot in hell. An apology to his son who survives him for losing his father, but may his father rot in hell for calling for the extermination of our people. That filthy bastard, and we'll be talking about him, and he is rotting in hell. One thing... We, one thing we can't we can we can't definitively say that he burns and rots in hell, but what we can indeed say was he spent all his money on doctors in the waning days. So let's see here. I'm not quite sure what is happening. Ah, I see. Okay, looks like uh, we have a a super chat on Cash App by Joseph. Everybody get your, your applause and raucous emojis ready. $100 over on Cash App by Joseph. God bless you, dear friend, for your faithfulness is what he writes. God bless you. Thank you very much for that. That is most kind of you in every single penny will be put to good use, my friend. That is a real blessing. I see some I see something else from you, Joseph. So will you check your check your cash app and see if
because it looks like you also uh, you, you made another another step on cash app but thank you so much my dear brother for that kind investment in the cause of white well-being god bless you and let's see make sure we have everybody from over here Uh, uh, Lady Mjolnir just super chatted over on the familiar alternative. $10 and saying everything she needs to say, her and her magnificent husband, to the anti-whites with that donation. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. That's With these, with these super chats to white well-being, you are not, you are not uh, buying somebody's toothpaste. You are not paying uh, for some some young guy to buy his first apartment. Uh, you are, every single dollar is used to slap the anti-whites right upside the head with something they can't defeat. I have beat them again and again and again in argument after debate after argument. They can't win. It's soul crushing things for them. It's not just a snarky point that I'm making in the moment to embarrass them. It is things that you can use the exact same verbiage in your world with the anti-whites or the vagues in your world, and you can help the vagues go free and you can make the anti-whites go to hell. So every dollar you give makes my voice louder, even if I do have razor blades in it for the sore throat. So thank you so much for that, Lady Mjolnir. All right, looks like we have everything there. And I believe everything over here, and we will get right back to work. And we're going to talk now about. Let me take a drink. Mm. Let me see. I got to get. I got to go to an IRL. Now Ezra says you're the vanguard. We'll find them before they get a chance. Us not fearing good friends will happily guard your integrity. No white guilt. Well, God bless you. Thank you, sir. I will stand right there, shoulder to shoulder with you. We'll protect what matters most. We'll have all of those beautiful little white babies behind us. Jay Hart, thank you for being incredibly proactive, Jason. Thank you, my dear friend. Mark Davis is here, another star. Writes, what did I miss, Jason? <laughs> A little too much to summarize. I got to go to an IRL soon. We're going to quickly talk about this this seething, fetid piece of filth in, in just a moment. And we're going to talk more about what the real story is. Yes, Noel Ignatyev was a putrefying, rotting, disgusting, melting slug of an anti-white. Yes, but everyone knew that, right? Everyone knew. Uh, yeah, and he was, but the real, the real truth is what I'm going to share. And well, there are a couple truths here that need to be shared, important things that you can share this coming Thanksgiving, this coming Christmas, this coming Boxing Day, things that you can use with your friends and family to say, hey, this is something to think about. Have you ever wondered? I see Ray Ray is here. Great to see you. David is here. Bigot Smalls is here. A lot of great folks still showing up. Takar is here. Great to see you. Eternalism. Great to see you as well. The party never ends. I tell you, I'm almost feeling better. My throat, uh, I think, was when I start fighting for white well-being. I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to get me out of my deathbed, just give me some service to white well-being, and I'll get up. Ooga booga. Uh, writing. Uh, to uh, Brand Danger about coming over to where all the cool pro-white people are at here on No White Guilt. Uh, thank you. Who gave me hearts? Mandy, thank you for that. Thank you for the hearts. Stimulus Maximus. It's one of my nicknames uh, that girlfriends have given me. Great to see you. Let's see. Okay, I'm not saying if anybody has any questions, well, that's a curious thing. Okay, I get are we all still here. There's a little glitch in the matrix. We're still here. I thought they might have run me off. Okay, let's see. 
Alpha is here. Ryan Manley giving me hearts and and flexing biceps. Somebody talking about chicken soup I saw. Chicken and vegetable soup. I have a very uh, abstemious lifestyle when it comes to diet and uh, so I but it, it does show that you know the people who come to you ladies and gentlemen and they say our chain reaction is here good to see you they say Alex great to see you they come to you and they say hey I haven't been sick in 37 years just buy this bottle for $37 we were talking about that earlier just tell them to go to hell is pass it right up. If they're honest, if they really haven't been sick in all of those years, that's because genetically the architecture of their immune system is such that they are beautifully responding. And in the future, we will, all of us will be this way. There is no reason that right now, if, if we weren't infected with anti-whiteism, ladies and gentlemen, we would have cured all diseases by now. Think about that. You have, and I try to speak to this, and I try, I try not to do it too much because when you begin to think about this, there's, there's a real fire here. If you want to find a fire to motivate you, if you want to be a recipient of some of those 10,000 flyers that our good friend has printed up at his own cost and is cutting them up in, individually at, at his own time and effort, uh, and you want to go out and pass those things out, and you need a fire to be able to do something like that, think about this. You have had loved ones and friends die of diseases, they would still be alive if we weren't infected with anti-whiteism. There is no reason whatsoever that we shouldn't be three, four, six hundred years into the future of where we are right now. The only reason is that we are like that eagle with our wings fettered to our sides. Just imagine all of the trillions of dollars, all of the geniuses who have been bought and their genius put on insol insoluble problems, raising the IQs of this group or making that group not act so aggressively or whatever it is, making diversity, we're harmonizing the diversity. Imagine if we had a government that cared, a leadership that cared about our biosphere, our people, and unleashed it with its creativity. You've seen moments in history when we have just barely tapped into that and you've seen the explosiveness in the creation and abilities of our people. Imagine if we fully embraced this. Disease would be a thing of the past in no time, in no time compared to what we've recorded in history. And it wouldn't be by way of meds to treat your whole life, that is garbage. We would get in there at the genetic level. We would take out what malfunctions and we would put in what works. Every No one would get sick again. Colds would vanish. Flu would vanish from the earth. There would be no, mono, there would be no companies making billions of dollars a year off treating you with inoculations for the flu. There would be no flu. There would be no way for flu to infect you. Think about that. When you sap aside your dying child's bed because of leukemia, when you sap aside your dying mother's bed because of X, Y, or Z, when you sap aside them, they need not have died from those things. And if you, if you want to find, you want to put blame somewhere, it goes right on the anti-whites. You want to know how this gets worse? You're suffering from one of those things. You're sick. You're hobbled. You're lame and you wanna place blame somewhere, right on the anti-whites. That's where all the blame goes. All right, let's talk about this piece of filth, Noel Ignatyev. And actually, let me pull him up so we can read a little bit from All right, because there are a few things to learn here that we have to touch upon. And I, I want to get to them quickly and then get on the road to my IRL so I can continue doing good work for all of you. 
All right. And if you all have any questions or comments, make sure you make them or hold your peace at least until next Sunday. First thing I want to say about this guy, a condolence to his son. Yeah, his son, I don't know anything about his son. Maybe his son is a, a decent guy. Maybe his son doesn't like what his father was up to. Maybe his son rejects everything. Or even if his son is a bastard like the father, still condolence to him because I'm a decent person. It's who I am. It's not who that bastard is. Uh, it's the person I look in the mirror every day. It's what I do. I... I'm not going to put anything ahead of white well-being, but I can express condolence, and even if they can't. So condolence to Noel's son. I'm, somebody told me, I could be wrong, and maybe it's in one of these articles. I'm not going to read very much, but that he has uh, survived, I think, by just a son. Now, here's the thing about that I know about Noel is that he was in anti-white organizations his whole life, his entire life. This guy was in communist this, socialist Democrats that, Democrats this, his whole life, this bastard, this piece of waste, this piece of human waste, absolute filth. I, I wish I could talk like I were around just a bunch of men. This absolute filth wanted nothing more than to inflict harm on Western kind and Western civilization. And what did he do? Now, I believe from the sound of the name that he probably came from Russia. Let me take a quick look. But that he's not Russian. Uh, let's see. Maybe I'm wrong. No, uh, Russia. Okay. So it is Russia, and I'm right. His family wasn't Russian. Of course, Russian means white. So his family wasn't Russian. His family was actually Jewish. Uh, we just had a super chat from the great Machiavellius Sucks, $1.99. Today, great participant, been around for a long time. Great to see you. Writing Black Lady Skin Care Products on the NHL Network. Thank you for sharing that. That's what I was just talking about earlier with the uh, watching. Yeah. Why is that being shown? Why? Because they're going to shove it in your faces. It's just like you want to watch. Uh, thank you for this. Machiavelli sucks. You want to you want to go watch some motocross. There are no non-white people. And yes, there might be one here or one there. But hyperbole, it, it makes legitimizes since there are so few to say that there are none there. And yet if any of these networks are going to go report on it, you're going to have a non-white male and a white female, a, a beautiful white woman. And she'll be sat so close to him, they're practically, she's practically on his lap. You could go watch uh, the mud bogging. You could go watch the strongman competition. You could go watch any of these things where there are no white people competing. Those chainsaw things where they, sports, where they, they, they cut things up with chainsaws and they climb the tree and they're cutting the pieces off at lightning speed. No non-white people there, no non-white people competing. But if it's going to be on TV, they're 100% going to put a non-white male with a white female in your face. If there is a non-white person in the, the hockey match, they're going to show him the majority of the, of the, or they're going to give him more time than any other athlete, no matter what he's doing, even if he's riding on the bench. So thank you very much for that super chat. So let's get back to the the human turd. I guess that's that's not that's not too nasty to say. So anti-white his whole life. Let's see if this says uh, Noel Ignatiev, born December 27, 1940, and went to hell on November 9, 2019, was an American author and historian. Now, I want you to pay close attention to the way these sorts of things are written. He was best known for his, so he was an American author and historian, not a deranged, sick puke who thought his whole life about nothing but exterminating 
I got to be careful about that because none of all of this may or may not be true. He thought nothing more than his exact words were to abolish the white race. That may or may not be true, but you can all find it uh, on all over the internet. You can Yahoo search it. You can Google search it. You can look everywhere. And he, remember, it may or may not, anything I'm saying here from Wikipedia, or I just pulled up the New York Times, uh, any of it or all of it may not be true for our anti-white censors. He was best known for his work on race and social class and for his call to abolish whiteness. We're going to talk about that wretched word in just a moment that kind of runs through your mouth like you had shoved your face in what you would imagine shoving your face into a baby's dirty diaper would be like whiteness. Ignatyev was the co-founder of the New Abolitionist Society and co-editor of the journal Race Trader, which promoted the idea that treason to whiteness is loyalty to humanity. Now, he was using, of course, the term as it is used in academia to mean white people. Whiteness means white people, and simultaneously it means oppression. He also wrote a book on uh, antebellum uh, xenophobia against Irish immigrants. Uh, he published, okay, let's see. Okay, he was born in Philadelphia. Wait, yeah, born in Philadelphia. The son of, I guess it's Russian immigrants who were actually Jewish, not Russian. Let's see. He dropped out of university because he was too dumb to complete it. Let me see. He then went on to the Communist Party because he's such an anti-white mutt. And, uh, of course, the Communist Party working to inflict harm on Western kind and Western civilization. He formed the Provisional Organization Committee to reconstitute the Marxist-Leninist Communist Party, shortened to POC. I kid you not, ladies and gentlemen. I kid you not. He was expelled from POC. Could you imagine being so radically anti-white that the organization you create to inflict harm on Western kind and Western civilization expels you? That tells you a lot about this horned bastard. He later became involved, uh, big apologies to his son for the way we're talking about his father, but it's all true. He later became involved in the Students for a Democratic Society. Well, now, doesn't that sound peachy? Of course, you dig into the Democratic Society and you find out that they want to erase Western civilization and Western kind. It says here, the organization fractured. I wonder if it was because he was too anti-white again. Uh, let's see. Okay, and then, because he was too dumb to actually get through college, I assume his parents had uh, plenty of money. Now, remember, this was at a time in history when a lot of money was being provided to certain immigrants from a certain country. And uh, they could tap right into those dollars and attend university. Now, it may or may not be true, but you all can research that for yourself. They went to universities and they were really just given degrees, uh, pro forma, didn't really have to pass. They were just given degrees. You can research that as well, may or may not be true, but he was so dumb, I guess so anti-white that even the university environment wasn't anti-white enough for this uh, leathern winged bastard. 20 years he worked in a steel factory, in a steel mill building farming equipment. So he, you know, he, he did some manual labor. He was a Marxist activist while he was there. Of course, he was a part of all of these organizations. He was involved, listen to this, he was involved in strikes by the mostly African-American laborers of the steel mill. Isn't that interesting? Hmm, what a coincidence that Noel would go to work after dropping out of university because he was too dumb, would go to work at a steel mill factory and that he would then organize 
the non-white laborers to attack the steel mill. My bet, I bet if we looked up the owners of those of that steel mill, that we would discover they were white. That's my bet. Not positive, but I haven't looked them up. But I think it'd be a pretty healthy bet. So we could probably, or or if uh, maybe not in Toto, to some large degree, white. So he organized these non-white laborers to undermine what the, the white people were doing there, to ruin their livelihood, to ruin this company. What a surprise. And then in 1984, he was laid off. He was laid off approximately a year later. He was arrested on charges of attacking a strike breaker's car with a bomb filled with paint. So he was arrested for terrorism, attacking a strike breaker's car. So somebody who, even though Noel had gotten all of the non-whites to strike. Now I wonder, was this strike breaker also non-white and decided, hey, I, I just wanna go back to work. I don't wanna be like all of these fools. I just wanna go work and have a job and a paycheck. I happen to like the white neighborhood I live in. Was that another non, was that a non-white person that then Noel decided to put a bomb on his car that contained paint? Interesting. Funny how these, little facts, these little tidbits don't make it out to the, to the masses. No, but you know what happened for Noel? Something interesting. Noel rubbed a lot of elbows, did a lot of networking when he was in all of these Communist Party USA, Provisional Organization Committee to Reconstitute the Marxist-Leninist Communist Party, the Socialist Students of Democratic Society, these other uh, uh, Sojourner uh, Organization, uh, all of these anti-white organizations, he did a lot of elbow rubbing, a lot of networking, so that a lot of people knew that he was a really disgusting, vile, anti-white bastard. And even though he was too dumb to get through college, even though he was working at a steel mill and he had been a troublemaker at a steel mill, and even though he committed an act of terrorism on someone's automobile, that great university known as Harvard decided to reach out to him. Isn't that interesting? Because here's where you're finding the story that you can share with this whole story here about Noel. You can share with your friends and family because Noel being, having no academic background, having no academic experience, having failed at academics, having to go work. Now he didn't go from university. This isn't a case of went to university, didn't like university, quit university, and then went out and independently became an engineer, studied for himself and, and became an engineer. He didn't leave there and go create Microsoft. He didn't leave there and go create Apple. He didn't leave there. So don't be a dumbass and say to me, not everybody who drops out of college is a dumbass. No, when you drop out of college and then you go and you work a manual labor job, and you incite laborers to attack your employer, you have demonstrated that you are dumb. You have demonstrated that you are too dumb to get through university. See, there's something about when you're a manual laborer, I grew up in a family, blue collar family, I've worked manual labor jobs. There's something about wanting to keep your employer doing business that kind of harmonizes. You're just, you know, when you go to work, and you, got it, you have X, Y, or Z, you do it, your manual labor job. You want that employer to keep getting jobs. You want him to get another job and another job and another job. Why? Because each job he gets, another paycheck lands on your lap. So you don't wanna tear him down. If you tear him down, you have demonstrated that you are an idiot. So if you go to university and then you can't take it and you drop out, and then you go to work a manual labor job because you're not bright enough to educate yourself. You're not bright enough to be autodidactic. You're not gonna go study on your own and, and become a physician or whatever it might be. And instead you go to a manual labor job and you do everything you can to destroy the person who signs your paycheck. You have demonstrated that you are dumb as all get out. And that is Noel Ignatyev. 
And then you demonstrate that you're also a terrorist by bombing a car with a bomb that is filled with paint. All of this may or may not be true. Please look it up for yourself. The pink haired fools at anti white, anti whites are at YouTube are listening. So he demonstrated that he was too dumb, but he must have rubbed some of the right elbows. He must have networked with some fellow anti white travelers while circulating through these Communist Party, all of these anti white organizations, because on one fine day with this record, with this background, no academic background, no academic success, someone or people from the university known as Harvard, which presents itself as this bastion of intellectual integrity, of holier-than-thou sanctimony, just pontificating superciliously to the rest of us plebes in the country, that it is so smart and it knows so much more than us, and it is so for this enrichment of our countries with doctors and engineers that increase crime rates and all of this business, that they reach out to this piece of filth that they find with his, his fellow turds in the toilet, and they say, no, come on over to Harvard. And we, pro forma, are going to make you a doctor. Yes, you have no academic success, but Harvard is going to make you a doctor because we want you. Here's the real story, ladies and gentlemen. Why would Harvard reach out to somebody like this? Because they want him preaching his vile anti-white screed for all his days. So they reached out to him and they said, come to Harvard and we will adorn you with the title of doctor and we will embellish that adornment with the title of Harvard, so that when you say anti-white things, it's not coming from a terrorist working or former employee of a steel mill. It's coming from a Harvard doctor and professor. What does that do for the credibility of Noel Ignatiev? That is the story, ladies and gentlemen, is that the anti-white bastards at Harvard brought this slithering skunk up into that university so that they could adorn him with the titles to make him prestigious for all of our people. When he vomited that vile screed of anti-whiteism across the landscape, he did so with the prestige and dignity of Harvard and doctor and professor on his name. And the anti-whites at Harvard did that. Not one thing that comes from those bastards at Harvard is legitimate, not one. And you make sure all of your friends and family, these coming days, these coming holidays, know that that is indeed the case. If they says, if it says Harvard, if it says degree from Harvard, if it says professor at Harvard, it means anti-white turd. That is what it means from Harvard. An institution developed by our people to better our people, usurped by anti-whites and now used to burn down all that we have created to destroy the very lives and the very people that were supposed to be the recipients of all the good that it could do. That is what Harvard is. That is the real story here when it comes to Noel Ignatiev. Many apologies to his son for the awful things we have to call his father because of what he is, what he was. Again, we can say, Maybe he rots in hell. We hope he does on a spit. But we know this. He spent all his money, all of those six or seven figures. I wouldn't doubt that he was being paid seven figures at Harvard, but maybe it was only six. He spent all that money on doctors and medications and surgeries because his intestines wouldn't stay connected. And he, like the words he was spilling out of his mouth, filled himself with his own shit. Day and night until he died of it. I hope it hurt.
for the lives that he has ruined, for the pain that he has inflicted, for the legitimacy that his professorship, his doctorate, his title of Harvard graduate did to our people. I hope every minute of it hurt like hell because there are countless lives that he has harmed because of it and countless lives will continue to be harmed because of it. Know this, if you want to argue a point on the extreme over here to a population, you need to push that extreme so that you can argue here. That is the role that Noel Ignatyev served for the anti-whites. He enabled them to talk about this while he talked about that, while he talked about outright white erasure. And he used the verbiage whiteness and no one with any sense will ever use whiteness and we'll say why in just a moment. No, this is the New York Times, No Ignatyev, 78, persistent voice against white privilege dies. Now listen to how the New York Times phrases somebody who repeatedly called on video for white erasure. He defined whiteness as white people and oppression. And he says on video, the purpose is to abolish whiteness. What did he say whiteness was? This may or may not be true. Look it up for yourselves. In the journal Race Trader and in a provocative book, Dr. Ignatyev argued that the white race should, in a sense, be abolished. Can you believe these filthy monsters would say this in a title? This is the New York Times. Again, what was this? In who created this institution? What was its purpose when it was created? What spirit does it now serve? They actually say in a sense, as though in any goddamn sense, it would be okay to say that a race of people should be abolished. Could you imagine saying this about any race of people? Could you imagine a trash collector as noble and as important as that job ha is to community, saying that an entire race of people needs to be abolished, much less a professor, a doctorate at Harvard, saying that entire race of people needs to be abolished. Right here in the title of the New York Times. So it may or may not be true, but you can look right now at the New York Times and you can read in the journal Race Trader and in a provocative book, Dr. Ignatyev argued that the white race should, the white race, show this to your friends and family who think it's not happening. This is indicting the New York Times and Harvard. The white race should, in a sense, be abolished. Noel Ignatyev, provocative scholar. Provocative, that's all he is. By the way, wrong use of that word, you ignorant typist bitch at the New York Times. There's nothing sexual about Noel Ignatyev. It might be evocative, you dumbass, but it's not provocative. This is the kind of idiots that type at the as talentless typist at the New York Times. A provocative scholar. I guess maybe he wore stilettos and maybe a short skirt to, to teach his classes. How hideous would that be? Who would not vomit at the sight of that? Scholar, scholar. How do you call this guy a scholar? Pro forma gets his doctorate from Harvard, who argued that the idea of a white race is a false construct that society would be better off without it. Okay, the white, it would be better off without the white race. Dies at 78 in a pool of his feces. His son, John, said the cause was compilations of a chronic illness. Again, John is his name. Apologize for the honest words about your father. Dr. Ignatyev, who came, doctor, you see, ladies and gentlemen, New York Times, 
people are going to be reading Dr. Ignatyev from Harvard said the cause was complications of a chronic illness. Uh, academic world after two uh, who came to the academic world after two decades as a factory worker. So as though that somehow gives him some legitimacy. Oh, well, he was a blue collar guy, decided to take a step up. Instead of he was a failure, then tried to ha destroy his employer, then committed an act of terrorism, and then had some anti-white buddies at his university probably also some Russians uh, invite him over and say, hey, come on, we'd like you to write. And, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, let me just point out, he published his book, his first book, right after he got that title, doctor and professor at Harvard. So he didn't publish that book when he didn't have the titles. No, he waited until he had those titles to publish that book. Okay, what else does it say before they cut me off and make me pay for the rest of this article, which I'm not going to give a cent to these anti-white slugs up in New York? Uh, let me see. Um... Nothing more here. It goes, it goes blank, and I can't see what they write there. And let's find out. We'll get a few more things. We'll read your comments. And we'll find out what more we can find out about, uh, real quickly, about this scumbag. Harvard graduate, School of Education. Wow, that's something. That's amazing. I mean, that's just like, that's like the equivalent of just head on down to, as I say, as noble as the, 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 the job is of collecting trash. That's like heading down to the trash company and saying, hey, you have some opinions, buddy. They're really anti-white. So we are going to put you in a NASA a costume and you're going to go up and uh, you're going to be an astronaut. And then your opinion is going to be worth so much more because you are astronaut uh, Joe or whatever, and uh, when you say anti-white things, people will sit up and listen. Could it be any more obvious what these, pardon me, what these bastards were doing? Faculty lecturer, look at this academic peacock that couldn't even tie his own shoes. Couldn't even, couldn't even work to keep his employer signing his paycheck. His academic work was linked to his call to abolish the white race. This is a quote. This is a quote on Wikipedia. And I could go, if we had time, I would go down and find the source of this quote. This may or may not be true, but everybody, even the pink haired, slovenly, orbicular, sea cow slugs, swiveling in the chairs that break under them every few days, can get onto Wikipedia and look this up and they can't censor my channel for making up uh, something that is false. It says right here, quote, his academic work was linked to his call to abolish the white race. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and look, he was published in all of these prestigious. Take this to your family members. Let them know when they want to point to all of these prestigious organs and entities in society. Let them know what you think about those so-called prestigious organs and entities in society. They are toilets swirling with the likes of Ignatyev. All right, enough of that garbage. This, this guy, this bastard makes me sick. You know what I'm going to do? You know what I think I should do for, for Noel? This is what I think I'm going to do for this bastard. I think I'm going to do something special for him, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you think I should do something special for this particular anti-white bastard? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to buy a bottle of the finest champagne I can find. Champagne. I'm going to buy a bottle of the finest champagne that I can fi find and afford on my working class paycheck, which is nowhere close 
probably a 70th of what this pig made, this anti-white pig squealing his anti-whiteisms uh, at our children and everyone else uh, at Harvard and across the entire United States. Because ladies and gentlemen, you know, all of the other universities say, well, it's legitimate to teach it at our university because it's being taught at Harvard. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my paycheck, my own dollars, and I'm gonna buy what I can afford, the finest bottle of champagne. I'm gonna find where this bastard is buried. I'm gonna find where he's buried, and I'm gonna pour the whole bottle out on his grave after I drink it. Let's see what you all have to say. I wonder how many of you got that, what I just said. Stephen says, please don't delete the live immediately. I missed the first part. It's Stephen and everyone else uh, who is uh, watching. And please share this in the future with folks who seem to be uh, unaware that I only delete the stream from No White uh, Gardening with NWG. It stays on No White Guilt. So it will be here, Stephen. You'll be able to watch the whole stream. In fact, I think it's they're always now recorded on DLive as well. Uh, so it will be available uh, both here, both on No White Guilt and I think on DLive. It is only deleted from Gardening with NWG. Thank you for asking that question. Give me an opportunity to clarify. Who got who got what I just said? What I'm going to do for for Noel? I'm going to take a I'm going to take a uh, video camera, and uh, maybe I'll meet up with some other people, IRL. Since I don't actually drink alcohol, maybe I'll have uh, a couple quarter or so of a glass. Everybody else can drink it down, and uh, then we'll we'll make sure to pour it out on Noel's grave. Dale Jones, super chatting $2. Thank you very much, my good brother. Saying a lot with those $2. Philosophic uh, Hat said, language. I know I'm getting, I, what happens is there are two things that can get me a little sideways. The first is when I start getting really upset about harm being done to my people, because all I can think about are our weakest members. I think about our children, I think about our women, I think about our elderly, and mostly just, I mostly think about our babies. And I just get furious. Uh, so that can get me sideways with self-restraint. And the other thing is when I'm a little under the weather and I have the razor blades in my throat, I get a little impatient. Uh, Heidi says, Red Ice is on DLive. Really? Don't forget to come over to our side, Jason. All right. Red Ice is over here. Well, let me say hello. Now, mind you, we do have a big hello to Red Ice. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are not subscribed uh, to Red Ice, you can pay a, an absolutely minimal fee to help this magnificent family and get access to all of their content, past, present, and what they're making. Support these people. This is what we do in service to white well-being. Outside in the rest of the white positive sphere, they can they can shun each other for giving each other pats on the back for working together. But in service to white well-being, we are like those those fibers in that Kevlar vest. We all come together, and we are infinitely stronger because of it. These people are doing great, magnificent work for white well-being. They are serving white well-being. Make sure you subscribe to them on DLive, wherever else you can subscribe to them. Make sure you subscribe to them. And uh, if you have the ability financially to become a member of their, uh, their site and have access to all the past, present, and content they're making, do so. You will be glad you did. They are wonderful people. As I said the other night after they had to go, uh, both Henrik and Lana stand head and shoulders above most men and women. And so we salute them. Thank you uh, for being here. And uh, let's see, thank you very much, Heidi, for mentioning that. Now, I did want to mention again, a big thank you to M 
PC162, I think it was, who provided money specifically earmarked so that I could have maybe, well, I'll, well, I'll get the most economical mon monitor or monitors so that we can increase the number of screens I can see at one time so that I won't have the DLive issue where I don't see things going on. We have to tap me in. Maybe even if I have to get one of those virtual reality helmets and I will be able to see it all at once, we will pipe it right into my brain. Uh, Red Ice writes, you are always so supportive, Jason. We can't thank you enough. No, I can't thank you all enough. Splendid. I love you all. Uh, and look, we have the real Poseidon is uh, over there as well, ladies and gentlemen. What heroes? Uh, let me give the Red Eye so that uh, a uh, one of these hatchets so that they can share their links. Or does it work the same? I don't know. If you have a moderator hatchet, do you are you able to add your links uh, links and otherwise you can't? I don't know. I did. I just clink, uh, gave them moderator status, but I see a, well, it says verified. I don't know. Well, try to give a, try to give a link, uh, your links, and if it doesn't work, uh, then we'll, we'll try again. But please support those uh, great people, their young family. And uh, what else were we going to say? Let's jump over here. Over on Entropy, thank you very much. Uh, Kabuki for super chatting $25 on Entropy. We want to make sure we support the good people over on Entropy. This platform exists because these three wonderful people built it and they need support. They, this is, this is not, uh, they're not going to, they know they're not going to be millionaires. Uh, Jared and George and I have had many conversations with them, but they, they need to make money for their time, money for their effort. And I'm sure because of their dedication, they're willing to, to take less than because there's going to be a, a satisfaction involved as well. But let's let's get them to that point with pats on the back. And we do that by super chatting here on Entropy. Uh, thank you very much for that $25 super chat on Entropy, Kabuki. Uh, thank you for your persistence and dedication, Kabuki writes. Well, thank you very much for that kind super chat. And over here on Entropy, looks like we have a question in the questions widget on Entropy. Uh, chain reaction. In Australia, a now you're writing about a specific, and I want to help all of my brothers and sisters, uh, white brothers and sisters, in uh, all of our countries around the world. Now, in America, we have a big problem calling Indians Native Americans. Never call them Native Americans. That gives them a claim to America that unseats the creation of America. Remember, there was no America until there were white people. There was a land mass. There were warring tribes, red and brown tribes. And looking at the data now, uh, there is older evidence that you can all look up for yourself of some very different tribes. But there were warring tribes, and it may or may not be true, ladies and gentlemen, when you call them native Americans, you unseat us as the creators of this country. They are Indians, or you might call them Amerindians. Those are legitimate names. We have honored these people. We, uh, some of the tribes at certain times, we allied with them and they were noble uh, people in, in those cases. We honored them as fallen enemies and we named uh, God's sake all over Virginia. Everything still has. We left what conquering people, except for the white race, leaves the names in place of the people they conquered. Everywhere you go, the Indian names are still in place. So we have honored these people. Uh, that's a that's a good thing to, to honor their heroism and, and to be honorable victors in that contest, which was a contest among all the different tribes that were here. Do not call them Native Americans. I hear my brothers and sisters up in Canada all the time. What do you all call them? You, you have elder peoples. I've heard something like this. The first peoples, I've heard that. Screw that. Stop calling them that. Don't call them that anymore. They're Indians. Or if you have Eskimos, you could call them Eskimos. Call them what they are. They There's nothing immoral or insulting about calling them the name of their taking. Do not call them the name that the anti-white has given them 
of all races so that you are unseated and believe yourself and your children believe themselves to be usurpers on someone else's territory. Christ's sake. I've had too many people, adults and children, all the way down telling me that oh, well, this is their country. They were the first ones. They didn't build no. They didn't build Canada. They didn't build Western civilization. They didn't build the United States. I mean, for God's sakes. So hats off to them for all of their genuine accomplishments. Call them non-white, or call them Indian if you want to specify. But if you don't have to specifically specify, like in a police report, just call them non-white. There's nothing immoral about non-white. It's just someone who is not white. There's nothing insulting. People of color is a statement that is very insulting because it excludes us from humanity. So unless you have to specifically identify a group, which should be rare, just refer to them all as non-white if they're not white. You might in a sentence say, I met a non-white guy today who was a great person. He was totally for white well-being. That might be a sentence you would use non-white in. There would be no reason to tell us what his specific race was. There are many reasons behind this. We can talk about it another time. There are many important reasons behind it. Chain Reaction, though, says in Australia, and I've heard this many times, Aboriginal elder. So never again. So in Australia, we have to help each other. I'm going to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. We're all going to make mistakes because we're being influenced all the time from outside by anti-whiteism and the anti-white narrative. We have to be stern with each other because we love each other, non-whites. So in Australia, a non-white spoke out about whites breeding with their women. There was an outcry against whiteys genocide. Question, why are non-whites so bigoted and anti-progress? Well, you know, there is a story, uh, there is a lesson, I should say, in that question that you asked their chain reaction. And that is this, the, now specifically we have to name Indians in the United States are facing genetic oblivion. And it is not because white people murdered them or poisoned them or, or defeated them so thoroughly in war that None were left alive. There was no genocide of these people. There was no, this is all anti-white nonsense. There can't be a genocide if they're still here. You can look right now, and of course, everything I'm saying may or may not be true, but you can look right now at the data and see that the group, the single group that miscegenates, meaning they take partners of other races more than any other group, is the American Indian. That is why they are disappearing. So that is a lesson for the white race. White erasure by way of biological erasure is a very real thing. And it is tragic that there used to be a, and I'm sure there are still are, I'm positive, there still are heroic American Indian individuals, absolute stalwart, heroic people. They probably, how could they not hate being all having their communities receive all of this everything free from you know stolen from the white population at gunpoint and then distributed given to the american indian community may or may not be true and given to them and as a result they they just waller they just they do nothing to get ahead how why would you when everything's just being handed to you so I'm sure there are some really good American Indian heroes out there that would like an input to the theft of Western kind, an input to the handout, an input to the handouts to their community, and would really like to put before it's too late an end to the miscegenation before it's all over, because that is what's happening, and that's the lesson that all of Western kind should take from the American Indian. What, what a tragic story that will be if when we read about those battles that we had with the American Indian, that Western kind had with the American Indian, 
and we hear we read about the heroism on both sides what a tragedy it would be only white people would think this way no white person no non-white person and certainly an anti-white non-white person would say what i'm about to say what a tragedy it would be if when we read about the heroism on both sides and those conflicts between western kind and the american indian that there are no more american indians that would be a tragedy it would just be a a, a footnote there used to be some but they reproduce themselves out of existence by taking partners from every other race except their own. So I think that's all we have here. And we're about to wrap up because I am only half packed and I have to head out, drive all night long. Brand Danger writes, that is true. I live on the edge of a reservation and about 25% of the tribe is mixed. Yes. Yes. I hear this all the time. I have a, we have a, a, an American Indian in the community for white well-being. And uh, he has complained about this. And uh, he, he definitely wants an end to put to all of these deleterious uh, activities, including the, the what can, uh, well, miscegenation, race mixing, I won't use the other verbiage. Let's make sure we have everybody here. Uh, Reptile writes, anyone remember Bill Ayers? Same story. Yes, indeed. Interesting. Interesting how that story is the same. Let me check. Oh, you know what I'm just remembered to do over here on DLive. We'll do before we get out of here. It's going to be the treasure chest time, ladies and gentlemen. Let me ask uh, Ray or anybody, any of the mods over on DLive. Uh, was Red Ice able to share a... Oh, they have a hatchet now. Okay. And it looks like Red Ice... Red Ice just donated a diamond. Well, thank you very much, my good friends. Thank you for that. Are these donations on at the very top here for this show? I'll go through and make sure I have them all. Make sure I read them all. And then I will distribute the diamonds. Look at this. The great folks at Red Ice contributing a diamond over here to the service of white well-being and what we're doing here. Thank you so much. And then I'm going to unleash the chest and it will distribute money. If somebody knows, uh, is it a lottery? Does it, is it just everybody who participated in the live chat? Are your odds up if you participated more than not? Okay, so let's see. We have, okay, wow. Looks like we have, oh, it looks like this is just in, Leno. So I'm not exactly sure. Is this so? Did we, where did the screen go? Great. All right. I know we had Galaxy earlier, but I don't see where ga Galaxy's donation. Did JK160 donate 200? I guess that's Leno points. Real Poseidon. Poseidon, did you donate 100 Leno? A diamond, I guess that is. So I can, I, I can see what I'm looking at. I can figure out what I'm looking at. Or how about Ray? Yeah, Ray, did you donate 90 Leno? Or Adele says hi to Mandy I just saw. Okay, Poseidon says yes. Oh, so that, that makes me, okay. So uh, let me thank then all of these good folks. Why does the screen keep uh, disappearing? Problematic. Okay, JK160, 200 Leno over here on DLive. Thank you so much, my good friend, good sir. Swishy, uh, super chatting 111 Leno over here on DLive. Of course, the real Poseidon, 100 Leno on DLive. Thank you so much, my dear brother. Red Ice, we mentioned 100 Leno as well. And I'm guessing that that is a dollar, but I moving the decimal point from converting from Leno to US currency. But correct me if I'm wrong. Thank you very much. Uh, Carrot Juice, 100 Leno. Thank you so much. 
uh, Arius Augusta, 100 Leno. Thank you as well. And of course, uh, Ray with 90 Leno. Thank you so much, my good sir. Now, I, I hope this is the whole list. But it can't be because I see it says Heidi up top says 247 Leno. And then pa last Paleocon, perhaps, is... Okay, last Paleocon is a 1.10 thousand Leno. Thank you so much. I will try to get a better handle on what exactly is going on on D Live. I will speak with the great Poseidon. Okay, Red Eye says, yeah, I heard it, that it works just fine. And to Maybe that's to my question. But either way, uh, lemons equals Leno. Board Troll just uh, super chatted one lemon. Thank you so much. If, if I move the decimal twice and that's $1, then I guess lemons are probably a little bit more than... Uh, U.S. penny is what I'm guessing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the lemons and the, I don't know if anybody gave ice cream cones or if you can mix it up or diamonds. I know we had the Ninjet earlier. That was truly magnificent. Thank you very much for that. Those are the top contributors. Let me see if I, I click that. No, it doesn't change anything. We'll figure it out. And anybody who has super chatted over here on DLive that I missed, I will make sure to get back to all of you. And we will make sure that you get the recognition that you deserve for your contribution to white well-being. God bless you all. Getting ready to wrap this up, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like we are all good on, we have covered all of the bases on entropy. I will check the last few. I will check the last few. Uh, accounts over here to make sure we haven't missed anybody over here. And we will wrap things up. Let me make sure. Did anybody have any more questions or comments they wanted to have read? Uh, GJJD has just written or has written in the live chat that No White Guild is right. 58% of American Indians miscegenate. And if you don't know what that word means, ladies and gentlemen, it means to mix races. They take a partner of a different race. 58%. I mean, they're not going to be around in another generation. That'll be it. Everybody claiming to be an American Indian after that, after another generation, will just be lying. Heidi says, the chest is also you getting your donations. Yes, people get a reward but you only have a week to claim them. Aha. Uh -huh. So is motivation both ways. Heidi says, I need to acknowledge the Ninjagini. Isn't that the one I, I uh, Heidi, I, I mentioned earlier? The Ninjagini. Okay. Thank you, Joseph, for correcting what uh what you had also done earlier wasn't it the the galaxy classy or something like that that gave the ninjagini or was there another one i can't see on the screen i'm looking at dragon lord my novel has an allegory for those completely powerless people certain turns of phrase from the anti-white's own works thoughts on not keeping veiling this don't say uh, but uh, Priest Nation. Well, I'm interested, brother. Yes, please get back to your writing. <laughs> Ron Howard just had one. I just said one Leno is 1.2. Oh, so I was just about right. M Mental math. Pretty close. 1.2 cents U.S.
All right. Uh, Seaver Hamlin says, "Don't forget the crate at the bottom." Okay, we're all talking about D Live. We're gonna do the. We're gonna do it right now. It's a crate. Is it a chest? Here it goes. Okay, it says distribute awards. You can add add, add a, points that aren't. What do I do? I just click this distribute awards. I guess. Okay, I'll do that. All right, you are now distributing the rewards, and it's counting down seconds. On there. So if you're not on D Live, ladies and gentlemen, you're wondering what the heck is going on. You're in the same position I am. I have no idea what's going on either. But we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out any <laughs> all together. But if there are any other questions about what we're doing, I'm gonna be at an IRL the next couple of days. And uh, so there won't be a premiere tomorrow evening, as I have started doing recently. I am going to be doing more premieres. And uh, so it will maybe make it up on maybe Tuesday night if I'm back early enough. If not, maybe Wednesday we'll do a premiere. Uh, if not, then Saturday, of course. And Thursday uh, we'll have tapped. Jared George and I will be on with you all for another scintillating or coruscating episode of Tap. And it looks like we have distributed some awards to Ray... Nordic Prince, Sea Monkey. Remember those things? Seaver Hamlin got some awards and Tracing Trey. Uh, according to my screen, those are the people who got awards. Congratulations <laughs> um, for your, your Leno. And, uh, and then, of course, next Sunday, I'll be back. We have some exciting things coming up, ladies and gentlemen, that we can't quite reveal at the moment but I am eager to share them as we move forward. You all are helping to make these things happen. It is a, a big boon to my heart to know that we are turning the pages, that it is our hand holding the pen for our story, and we are jotting down exactly what takes place. We are writing people like Ray in as the heroes to this story. Uh, people like LG, Polygon, Seaver, Machiavellia sucks. The leftover. Brant Danger, uh, Stephen JK160, uh, Ryan Manley. We are writing these people into this story, into these pages as the heroes that are going to bring about that tomorrow, where our babies can never be infected again by these anti-white mean pathogens, these MPs that sit insidiously, so insidiously, insidiously in their lives, undermining all of their potential, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, every aspect of their lives ruined by the mean pathogens. And then they turn in every way they can to escape who and what we are, increasing the size of that void in their hearts, increasing the size of that void that they then try, as we've talked about tonight, to fill with meaningless trivialities, that they try to fill with new cars, that they try to fill with handbags, that they try to fill with the bio-spiritual projections of some other race. We know what will cure our people. We have it here before us. When we spread this curative contagion, we are doing the work of gods, ladies and gentlemen. This is no small thing. It is no small feat. When we succeed, we will be remembered for all time. It'll be because you and I decided to put our hands down and say, there'll be no more. There'll be no more harm. There'll be no more infliction of these infections on our people. We're going free. We're sick of you. We have had enough. And now for you, it is over. Brothers and sisters, let's go free. <laughs>